everybody, everybody yeah. everybody's ready to start this Let's shit. Let's do it. Cling, clang. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh. I have water. Fire. <laughs> Cling, clang. Ah. Cheers, cheers. Uh, how come Amanda can't just be an alcoholic like us? Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Screenshots. This is Road to Spider-Man. This is such an important episode because we're getting ready for the next Spider-Man movie uh, coming out. What's your, what are you smiling about? <laughs> I was looking for like a movie recommendation, right? And I looked yeah. up Tobey Maguire's filmography to go to Pleasantville. But I saw that the last movie he's been in, well, guess what the movie is? What? You'll never guess it. It's The Boss Baby. The Boss <laughs> Baby? He was, he was the narrator in Adult Tim, and his last live-action movie was Pawn Sacrifice. Nice, okay. He played so, Bobby Fischer. So we are going to, you know, we have our foundation game, um, which you can find in the description, but we are also going to do another game on top of the foundation game. What we're going to do, I'm sorry, kid. We are going to talk about each and every single live-action Peter Parker Spider-Man movie, and we are then going to pick our favorite scenes from each movie, and Amanda's going to judge those scenes. She's never seen any of those movies. Give us a rating on how well we tell the scene, if, if maybe she finds the scene exciting or whatnot, and then we have to drink a penalty from this beer, and let's see how, how far we can go without dying. The first movie we're going to do... Wait, you didn't introduce us, aren't you? Oh yeah, you know you're the right. Fuck? This is this is Johnny. Is this, do I need a bottle? Opener? Yes, you need a bottle opener. Oh. This is what we just had. He had this, a knife. this is oh. Johnny Cruz co-host Dan Barker, Troy Javaris, Amanda Kenberg, and Cade Bergman. The first time we're having six people on the podcast. Pretty exciting. And I'm Mark Trevino, of course. <laughs> but you already knew that, guys. Let's get into it. The first Spider-Man movie. It's just there's no subtitle, right? It's just Spider-Man. No, it's just Spider-Man. It's just 2002. Spider-Man. 2002. The, the year it came out is in the title. <laughs> no, yeah, that's not true. Yeah. But um, so this movie, right? Yeah, it came out two thousand and two. Uh, two hour. It was two hours and one minute. Directed by Sam Raimi, who directed. He was f- most famous for directing the Evil Dead movies, and he do- he directed this other movie called Dark Man. Okay, I don't know. And then David Coop wrote the screenplay. He wrote like Jurassic Park and stuff. Um, and the box. It was the first movie ever to break a hundred million dollars at the weekend bo- opening weekend box office with one hundred and fourteen million. And nice. it made in its, in its total run, it made four hundred and seven million dollars domestically, and worldwide made eight hundred twenty-five million dollars. Uh, um, and if you look at, the, I remember looking at this. If, if this movie made almost identical money as Wonder Woman did, Wonder Woman made four twelve uh, domestically and eight hundred twenty whatever million worldwide. But it, this sold almost twice as many tickets because of the uh, the ticket prices are going up. So oh, okay. Yeah, this yeah, was yeah. a much. This was like the, today. This would be like a billion and a half million dollar movie. So. That was a good fucking movie. Yeah, so it was great. Budget thirty one hundred thirty nine million dollars. Wow. And this movie was very important to me as a kid because oh, it taught me go. that everybody in high school is thirty five years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got to high school going like, should I look older? Yeah, like, what's yeah, wrong with yeah. me? But. It was very hyped at the time because it was the first of its kind mo- for the most part. That I mean, X Men was sort of yeah, there, but they had the black thing. leather suits and it was like whatever. This one was like you know the Spider Man suit actually looked like Spider Man and stuff. And from three to ten, I probably watched this like a hundred, like a like hundreds of times. Such a good movie, such a good movie. It, it belong. It, when I think about this movie, it plays in the background. Of, I say this a lot. It plays in the background of like my cloudiest first memories because I, I was always just watching it. Yeah, my thing was to- Toy Story. That's like that's my 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 cloudiest memories, but um. So then as a whole, let's talk about this movie. This movie is fan. When you say it's a first of its kind, I, I, I actually, although that's true, I also feel like it's selling it short. This is like more than just a first of its kind. Like this was totally transforming the way that we were going to view superheroes in uh, television and movies because we've never, they've never done anything like this before. It was fantastic. Like the, the visual effects. The scores. The, the sco- oh my oh, god! Oh yeah, the scores. Of, yes, does a song in yes. it. Yes, I love that song. I fucking I love that too. song. Oh, yeah. Cause a hero. I oh, fuck it's so good. I'm but the the it. theme, the Sp- Tobey Maguire Spider Man theme. The so da-da-da, 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 da-da-da. Uh-huh. Can you imagine if they play that? In Yo, the movie? if they, they play to, that in if, the next movie. If if Toby shows up in this next movie and that theme doesn't play, it's. It's not gonna hit the same, not nearly the same. No as way. As it, I'd be, I'll be let down. I'd be like, eh. Danny Elfman composed the theme. It's so yeah, what a stud. good. But sorry, go ahead, kid. I was gonna say this is the first Spider-Man movie I'll be going in with high expectations. Oh, absolutely. High expect. I usually really? go with high standards and never with expectations. But this movie, I have expectations. So that's, yeah. yeah, that's not probably good. But no, I think I think a lot of people have expectations because because uh, you were saying this plenty of times. You're like, can you imagine 
if Toby and Andrew weren't in it. They have to be. They That'd be funny. The bi- it'd be hilarious, but the biggest letdown of the century, yes. no, honestly. If, if not the, been, what, the if, century? It's, it's only been 20, yeah, it's only, it's only been 20, uh, 20, 22 years. What about COVID? No, that was that. a big no, letdown. No one gives a shit about that. COVID, what's COVID? Christ. What's COVID? Yeah. I don't even know what that is. Lost apartment. my job? What about what? the nuclear bomb drop of 2025? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Shut the fuck up. Knock on wood. But what I say. What do you guys think about it overall, everybody? I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, uh, except what, for Amanda. Uh, oh, the <laughs> Spider-Man, like the OG? Yeah. The first one, yeah. I love it. Uh, I agree with his, like, cloudiest memories thing. Like, I remember being in, like, my playroom as a kid, just, like, watching it. And they had, like, the music video. That's why I remember the Nickelback. Yeah. Thing. I used to watch. I had, like, the video or, like, the DVD, and I used to watch the music video to it. Over and it was and just over. awesome. They were on the on the top of the building just rocking out. And just yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember when I was really little... I was sitting on my on the floor with my older si- uh, siblings, and I made myself a cheese sandwich, and I put a pile <laughs> of, of salt on top of the oh, cheese. Yeah. And, we started, and they were playing a game where like they name like songs or soundtracks. And the first time it comes around to me, and I go the Sp- the Spider Man soundtrack. And I go, okay. And then they came around to me again, and they named some other stuff. And I went, the Spider-Man sound, cause <laughs> is the only thing I knew. Oh, uh, man. Wait, so how old were you guys when this came out? I, don't uh, I was three. I was four. I must have been five then. Oh, wow. It came out, six. I think, September. What year, what, what year was this? Uh, it was 2002. Oh, wow. It was supposed to, I think it was supposed to come out. They did a lot of marketing and stuff that they had to cut because uh 9-11 oh yeah like they had the the end there's one marketing thing where like the a helicopter got trapped in like the a web between the twin towers oh, wow. and they filmed like spent two million dollars on it yeah isn't that crazy that yo that's wild fuck have you they guys ha- have you guys ever seen the uh original design they were gonna go with for the green goblin yeah the no. original Mechanized mask. oh wait, yes where it's like it's like an animatronic mask and it, it like it's because in the movie, it's like a helmet, right? Mm-hmm. But they're like going to have like an actual mask that like emotes and talks. and it, It's like skin. What a shame they uh, didn't do that. It looks so cool. There's, it's on YouTube. There's like a two-minute video of them testing and playing with it, and it's so cool. It's all yeah. animatronic. Mm. It looks so cool. I think at the time, they were just trying to go like, all right, we have to go re- like realistic with somewhat with this and just made it like military style. Well, oh, yeah. Because I think... I still the, like what they ended up Yeah, with. I like I like that suit. Yeah. Well, because the, the, the X-Men set a precedent where it's like, we have to make this a little bit realistic. Because that's kind of what they did with the the suits and the and the um the, the like the planes they were using and like it, it was all trying to everybody trying, was just in black leather they were trying to ground it as much as possible well, this was the first ba- except for like superman and stuff like that this was like the first modern type movie like around the 2000s where like the hero wasn't wearing just like a black leather suit yeah. like they actually had an actual costume uh but the th- i think the thing that this movie does really well is if you re if you watch the first ten minutes, you know who all the characters, you know Aunt May, Uncle Ben, Peter, Harry, uh, Mary Jane, yep. Norman Oswald, you know everybody so well. Yep. And then Peter, and, and in ten minutes you know everybody, and then he gets bitten by the spider, and you're like, all right, now we're going. Like it, it, it doesn't t- waste any time with that. It's, it sets itself self up very simply. Yeah, and it, I think it, it works with for the characters well. Yeah, we were talking about it, and I was Johnny and I were talking about it, and I was saying like. From the origin origin story part of the story, like I feel like that movie did it better than even just the newer Spider Mans. Definitely, do. by far, by far. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like how all that like the teacher, the teacher is just like the same age as them. Yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. who's like, what is going on? I'm like, is he another student? I like, love that's a teacher. I love the memes where he's like, I wouldn't want to fight me neither. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit's so funny. Um, but I. The, the coolest part about this, I think, is everyone loves the swinging. I mean, like, you know when yeah. you play the Spider Man video games. Are you yes. kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> swinging? Sw- yeah. Shit. Well, okay, first shot of the game was on me. Um, but the swinging's so cool because, like, you actually, when you're a kid, you know, you just imagine yourself swinging, doing things. Right. But this time you get to actually see well, it happen. It's and that's, fluid. Yeah. yeah. Well, they actually fluid. designed, like, new camera technology toward, like, you know, like, the, the same kind of technology you see at, like, football games where they have the camera going around the field? Yeah. It's basically, like, a, it was a precursor to that and stuff, and they can drop the camera like a bunch of stories so they can get him swinging because they would get the practical shots of swinging around the city and then add him in later composite. There's a uh, one scene where Mary Jane is holding on to Spider-Man and you can clearly tell it's a mannequin while they're swinging. Well, the, the oh, wind's blowing the wrong really? way too. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. But I think yeah. people like drag on that. It's like, it's blowing the wrong way because it would have gotten on her face. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to see. You'd ne- you wouldn't know unless someone, like I would have known yeah. unless someone pointed it out to me. True. Um, but yeah, it's fantastic. It, it, it 
allowed us to you know come to lie like in in, uh, in our imagination because I remember being so young and this movie coming out, all my friends talking about it. What fr- what like little friends I had because I was so young, like I barely knew what hanging out was, and. Man, oh my gosh. Like like you said, you watch that movie religiously. Like, I don't think... And like I said, I, I watched Toy Story when I was younger and stuff, but this is where I was, like, transported into a different world. Like, it actually did that for me, whereas nothing ever has before. This got me into, like, acting and art and stuff. It was actually really influential for a lot of people um, our age at the time. Do you guys I, prefer the organic web shooters? Good question. No. no I, I really? I don't. I don't. E- even though I grew up like watching Spider Man before I read comics of Spider Man, just I don't know. I I've, I guess I've just consumed more content of uh, mechanical web shooter Spider Man in the comics and stuff like that. So I guess I'm more used to that now. I mean, I I don't hate the idea. It's fine. I just it's just gross. Kind of <laughs> just <laughs> it's just like yeah. kind just of like gross. <laughs> It doesn't. Well, out, doesn't of his, sense. Yeah. out of his, out of his arm. Is there a hole that well, it's his vein, yeah. So there's like a little hole that opens. Oh, it's supposed to be coming yeah, out of his weird. vein. Yeah, because I mean, you see I the right here on his wrist. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. You well, know who came up with the idea? A white spot here. Yeah, it was like a little. Yeah, you saw it. Yeah. You, ever, you, you know who came up with the original idea for the organic no. web shooters? No. Linda. It was James Cameron because he wanted to make a Spider-Man movie really, really bad after Titanic, and he was going to do it with Leo DiCaprio, and then he never got it. He never got to do it. But if that would they they. They did. They had. They had that. They had a uh, that idea. But they, there's also a. You could see in the movie he's wearing a web shooter when he's shooting the webs. But they just went with the organic ones. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That'll happen. So I. I think, like, the entire trilogy of these movies. But like, uh, I'll give credit to the first one. Like, I feel like we're at a place today in comic book movies where we can have like ridiculous crap, like Rocket Raccoon and stuff, because of the Sam Raimi movies, because I feel like yeah. compared to the X-Men where it was kind of embarrassed to be a superhero movie, you know, everyone's in black leather, like <laughs> we said, you know, like it does not, yeah. like this, like, you know, it was, it was goofy at times. It was silly. You know, you had a man in a freaking glider in a mm-hmm. Power Ranger suit throwing bombs at a guy swinging on, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, uh, I feel like that kind of opened the, the gateway for yeah. these kind of movies to exist as they are now. Yeah, definitely. It's I like the OG, like it started the whole thing. Yeah, it started, yeah. Like, like, you know, like X-Men came out first, but it was like, you know, like, Embarrassed. Like, oh my god! I gotta, I gotta pause real quick. We forgot Johnny has to take one full shot because he, oh, he yeah. had to, he had the tab two half shots last, uh, yeah, last game. So, go ahead, Johnny. Right. Just take, take, uh, take a full shot. Also, this movie starts the trend in this in the Sam Raimi Spidey, Spider-Man trilogy where there's a there's a, a like a super silly stylized like montage of like Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, and this one it's like. All, him swinging around at first, like we, when he first makes the suit, and we see him swinging around and like talking to people in New York. He's like some kind of freak of something, whack a dude. Yeah, he stinks, yeah. and I don't like him. Which yeah. is Jim Norton, the comedian. Yeah. I never knew that, but I love that montage and stuff. And there's one great scene where they they they're like f- the cops are chasing these robbers, and they get out and they see that the robbers like stuck in a web up in the air, like stuck to it. Dang. And he goes, he goes, hey, hey, Marty. Get a look at this, and it's two like burglars, but the girl is wearing like a crop top like yeah, burglar what shirt, you're about. and I'm yeah. like, oh, she's at least she wants to like look Be fashionable. Yeah, you gotta, take, a, you, you gotta take another half shot when you're done with that. I got him on web. Web. Wow, Danny's <laughs> getting all of us piece of shit. I know, like ten people said it. But Wait, but I had it too. No, that's <laughs> just, you can't do that. You just said it. The word went got no, safe I though. Said, yeah, you already like, got. I already you already got, got, got you. Uh, you do that every time, yeah, big dumb, idiot. Anyway, another thing for this movie, by the way, is that. They cast a certain character so well that they haven't been able to recast the guy. Yes. J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. Mm. It's, yeah. They haven't had the balls to recast him because he's that it's good. Unbeatable. They should just use him again. Like, if they really... Yeah, well, like, they no, are. I don't think people... Oh, really? Yeah. You, oh, spoilers. Oh, oh, yeah, because he hasn't watched any of the trailers. No, I watched... No, 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 no. No, 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 no the, the last one. Not, no, the, he was in the last one. Oh, really? He was in the yeah. last one. And, and, and oh, spoilers. Yeah, right. And Far From Home... When they release, when they announce that uh, P- P- Peter Park, when Mysterio has renounces as Peter Parker, Spider Man, it's J. Jonah Jameson, J.K. Simmons. As he, they just brought him back. Hold on, but then, <laughs> so if they're gonna do like the multiverse thing, are they he gonna might bring play in another? <laughs> I, he, dude, I would love it to see him play both versions <laughs> yeah. of J. Jonah. That'd be yeah. so good. <laughs> Give me pictures of Spider Man. I'll get your pictures of Spider Man. <laughs> That's so funny. Um. <laughs> so we we do have five movies to review. So let, I think we should actually move on, um, and do our scenes. What's up, Danny? Can I say one more thing? We don't have to get into it, but I just want to say yeah, that these movies did 
inspire some of the best video games too. Oh, 100 yes. percent, mm, the best. Um, absolutely. Okay, so for incredibly the, influential movie for inspire, not inspiring for uh, the scene we're doing. Who wants to go first? You want to go clockwise, counterclockwise? I'll go last. You'll go last. You want me to go first? I don't give a shit. <laughs> okay, I'll go. F- fuck you. I'll go first. <laughs> the okay, Amanda. So this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna explain my scene. Okay, and then you have to give it a score, but you can wait so you hear everybody's if you want. And then whoever's got the highest score doesn't do anything, and everybody else has to drink the difference, and you're going to grade it 1 through 10. So if you give me a 5, I would have to drink 5 sips of beer because that's the difference between 10. If you give me a 6, I have to drink 3 sips of beer. That sucks. Or 4 <laughs> sips of beer, that's the difference between 10. Yeah. Okay? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yikes. I know. So my scene from the first Spider-Man I think it's not only the most powerful, but it's a huge pivotal moment for Spider-Man. And some would say it's the the point of not the point of no return, but um, the like oh, kind of the inciting event. But a little bit later on, it's when Peter Parker sees Uncle Ben die. He doesn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he watches Uncle Ben die, and he goes and hunts down the person who killed him. And he's in the he's he, so he hunts down. He, he puts his costume on. That's not even his actual costume. He just has rags and a, and a ski mask. That's all he has. He just learned he had powers. And he's swinging with police uh, cruisers, looking for the guy. And he finds a guy by a dock in a almost warehouse building. And he, it's almost like a horror movie. He hunts the guy inside of a building, just him and a guy. The guy's got a gun, a knife, and it's just Spider Man with his hands. And it's so cool because you're looking at the scene through the perspective of the murderer. So it's almost like Spider-Man's hunting down the viewer as well. And that's like, look at the power Peter Parker has. And he only learned he had powers like about a week ago. And he's already this fucking awesome. So you watch Peter Parker or Spider-Man hunt down the guy. He finds the guy and he takes off his mask and he gets angry. He's like, look at me, whatever. You killed my uncle or something. And you could see the acting in Tobey Maguire, how angry he is. And it's very powerful. And he doesn't kill the guy. He, do- he doesn't even hurt the guy, really. But the guy backs up and accidentally falls out, out, out of a window and dies. And that starts the whole chain reaction of painting Spider-Man as a villain. And so the entire city is, is immediately thinking that he's a bad guy. So he, so the rest of the movie kind of tries to create a positive name for himself. Um, so it's a very powerful scene, and it tip. That's disgusting. And he, <laughs> and he tips off the entire movie. It, that's where it starts. So that's my scene. I farted. I know. That's my scene. The viewers don't know. Shut up. <laughs> that's my scene. Uh, can I go second? Because I just realized I want anybody to steal my scene. No, it's too late. We're going this way. Oh, now. Come on. Kate is gonna. You said last. Kate is gonna go now. Okay, so we're gonna do all the scenes. Then you're gonna read all. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Do you want to rate it after we're I'm done rate saying it? Maybe we should do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So go ahead. I'm gonna fucking remember. forget. Yeah. All right, give me a rating. I'm too old for this. Um, <laughs> I would say. I use the word horror, so you what have is to it? love. Out me. of ten. Yeah, out of ten. Uh, I'm gonna say because it's. I could like picture it, like as you were saying it and stuff. Yeah. So I was gonna say like a seven. All right, okay. All right, Cade. Is that three sips for you? Imagine like well, yeah, well not yet. I m- I might be the if I'm the biggest winner, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Where's okay. your where's your beer? Imagine like it's an like actual beer. horror film with like Spider-Man? S- someone like a scary guy with like, like a scary guy <laughs> like Spider Man's like abilities like Man uh, getting spider. hunted by yeah. somebody with those abilities, like that would actually be terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah. Or le- Awful, yeah. dude. All right, kid. Let's hear it. <laughs> All right, so my scene is with Norman Osborn. This is Harry. Oh, she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't know any of the characters. Okay, no, no, so they care. Spider-Man's best friend, that, like his actual friend, his dad owns this major company. It's like his life's work. And he shows up on like one of the big board meetings, and they're like, hey, we're voting you out. And he's like, no, you can't do this to me. Like, I literally <laughs> built everything. Like, my whole life say is the line. What are you talking say about? Say the line. Like, say the gotta line. Say it. Gotta say it. I'll, I'll get you know, to it. I'll okay, get to okay, it. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um... And so he's like, you can't do this to me. And they're like, no, like we already voted you out. As soon as we go to this like big event festival thing in a couple of days, we're going to announce your resignation. And it's like, it's all over. And he goes, damn. So he's sitting there. He looks at them, camera pans into the face. And he's like, eh. and he gets a little smirk and it's fucking weird. And then he turns, to, he's the goblin. He's the main goblin, right? And so the f- big festival comes in. Everyone's having a good time. And, uh. Fuck, what happens after that? Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 you missed the line? Wait, 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 wait. You know the line? Oh, you're talking about that line? Yeah, yell it. Just fucking scream it. Oh, okay. So he goes, 
Oh, shit. Oh, that was a good... No, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. So he's getting pissed at this point. Okay, we'll rewind. So he's pissed. Okay. He's like, no, 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 you're out. And he goes, oh, fuck. What did he say? I completely forgot. About <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He's sitting there. He's getting mad. He's getting mad. He's like... <laughs> Do you know how much I sacrificed? Yeah. What, what if I told Cade, how dare you guys do this? Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't know that was You know how many guys I fucked to get this company? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to skip forward to the scene where he does, like, he does his thing. Okay, so okay, fast okay. forward. He's Every the goblin now. Okay. He comes flying in. Guys, He's shut like, up, yo, shut fuck up. these people. I'm going to murder them. So he comes in flying like a fucking supersonic. He's flying through him. Throws a fucking monster. Well, it's like not really a monster. It's like this big. Like, a tiny ball. little bomb. And it fucking ex- and he's like right as he throws it he goes wait why the fuck did he say out why, why am I forgetting everything I don't no, know. he says he says he says out, out am, am I, I? because right, they because said he was out oh yeah so he goes out am I and he throws oh, it and one. they fucking literally disintegrate into skull they turn into skull skeleton things completely Horrifying. annihilated but he literally threw it right at his fucking son his son was right there too <laughs> yeah, so him he and just Mary sacrificed Jean his son and his girlfriend and was like fuck you guys a piece. <laughs> But he, he didn't get them though. He didn't get them. No, he just missed them. Yeah, he, yeah. they were two feet away. They were. They literally were right <laughs> here, and his board members were right here. And I was like, okay. "Wow!" He threw it right down there, blew this bit, and they blew it up right here. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all. Okay. Actually, I got a little sidetracked there. It's all right. I think, I think my brain thought that was, it was high. fun. You did the voice good, and Johnny was talking about penis. So you know, normal, <laughs> normal, normal <laughs> podcast normal episode podcast. that tends to happen. Yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> Amanda, give that rating. Um. Well, again, it was a good explanation. I can definitely picture this, even though I haven't seen it. Um, I should describe the goblin a little better, Amanda. Maybe yeah. the big dark green <laughs> monster looking green guy thing. Yeah, Shrek? not the Hulk. Big orange, Shrek. big yellow <laughs> eyes. I know that. But um, I would say I, I think it's about even with Mark. So I'm gonna say a seven oh, as well. Okay. So I'm gonna have to tie him. All right, Troy. So mine takes place like halfway through the film. Um, we're at Aunt May's house. Imagine like a two story, you know, house. And Peter just got back from <laughs> doing Spider Man things. <laughs> Climbs in through the through his bedroom window, so no one sees him come through the entrance because everyone's downstairs having Thanksgiving dinner, I believe. Mm. Um, oh so no, that's that's at the, that's at his apartment in the city. Is it is it apartment? Okay, so yeah, I'm sorry. So they're in his apartment, whatever. They're having Thanksgiving dinner. Everyone's there, so it's Aunt May, um, Mary Jane, his best friend, and the Green Goblin, the villain. Mm-hmm. But you know, he's his alter ego, Norman Osborn. Um, and they're eating dinner. And they're waiting for Peter to come home. And the Green Goblin has his suspicions about Peter. And Peter has his suspicions about the Goblin. They hear the thud from Peter coming in the room. Oh, I didn't know Peter was home. I thought he wasn't home. So the Green Goblin storms into the room that Peter just just came into the window of. He's looking around. Peter's not there. He's up on the roof. Clung up on the roof. Ceiling, ceiling. Ceiling, excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. Ceiling. He doesn't want the Green Goblin to see him. You know, we get a view of... Bird's eye view, you know, you see the Green Goblin, he's looking, you know, where is he, where is he? And Peter's wounded from his last Spider-Man event, his last battle. He has Spider-Man Peter event. <laughs> it, was Spider-Man. A, it was a quick time event. <laughs> quick time event. Wasn't press A, press A, fast. Wasn't he, he just fighting the Green Goblin? He, he, he got, he got cut fighting, uh, fighting the Green Goblin. Right. Oh, okay. fighting him. Who was the pers- first person that said fighting? It was me. Go ahead, take your <laughs> shot. <It was laughs> I could have totally just been like, it was Johnny, and everybody was like, yeah, fuck Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Spider Man, uh, Spider Man's wounded, right? He's up on the ceiling. He's wounded. He's bleeding. You see the blood dripping down. And it's globbing up, and it, whoop, it drips. And the Green Goblin turns around, and just as he turns around, the the blood, you know, splats on the ground behind him, and he gets alerted. He turns around, looks at the blood on the ground, <laughs> looks up. Spider Man's gone. He's hiding. Mm. And like it's a very tense scene, yeah, it's, especially it's like when you're a kid. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh my God, he's going to get Spider-Man. He's going to get Spider-Man. It's right there, too. He was yeah, right yeah, above Yeah, he's right him. there. He almost has him. Almost has him. Mm. In front of the whole family, too. You know, Aunt May yeah. would have found you. Yeah. You, know, you don't want that. <laughs> and, 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 and to me, I, I just love that scene. It's like, it's tense. It's I, And I, I love how it's such a, like a, such a small sound and he hears uh-huh. it. Like, it, you get like, oh, this guy is good. Yeah, yeah, it's like a tiny splotch of, bl- tiniest little drip. He turns around and looks for it. He looks like super hearing, right? He's got really yeah, he, he's up all on like, like enhanced. Yeah, yeah. Okay. steroids. He's on that roid. Like, yeah. <laughs> all right, so give that rating. Um, I'm gonna say I can definitely like as you were describing it, like with the suspense alone. I'm gonna say it's an eight. Jesus Woo-hoo! Christ! That, he, yeah. that was a good. That's was a good scene. Yeah, it was. That's that a sounded good. Scene, like that yeah. made me want to watch it. Like, okay. Great scene, Danny. So I wanted to do the scene with the Queensboro Bridge because if you look real close, you can see Johnny in the background. Oh, <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, when I met this, uh, I'm not. Gonna oh, say oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. 
want to say it? What? All right. No, Kate, okay, you know, when I first met Danny, he was living under the Queensboro Bridge, jerking off punks for $15 a man. <laughs> That's how I met him. All right. Anyway. <laughs> how was he? Best five, 15 bucks I ever spent. <laughs> so my scene is Peter Parker. So uh, to start the movie, he's like kind of a nerd or he is like a, just a huge nerd and he gets bullied in high school, basically. And then he gets his powers and he notices and he goes to school and the bully comes up and tries to bully him again. And he decides to like stand up to him because he has all these powers now. Mm. And I don't know if I'm building this scene up right, but basically what happens is the bully's like, what'd you say to me? And Peter Parker's just like trying to be all cool. And he tries to punch Peter. And this is like the first time it goes into like the spider s- sense. Ding! Fuck <laughs> you! <laughs> what did you say? I <laughs> thought I thought I was helping I was him. I thought I thought he forgot what it was. Oh, L- gullible! L- L- um, L- 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 gullible! I, I wanted to say it, but yeah. I wanted yeah. to wait. I hate. Myself. Okay, Yo, Mark's, Mark's drunk. Mark's drunk. He's no, wasted. but this is the Mark's first like, time. Mark's like, let me help. He's this is the first time you sort of like get into his head of like what it's like to have spidey senses. Right. Because he throws a punch and it just like slows down and he goes like this and the right. fist is there and he looks and it's like. He looks at it like slow motion kind of yeah. thing. He sees like the fly mm-hmm. like landing on the thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. He and then I don't what what happens after that. He pulls the punch back and does Peter like they attack come. him back or no, he just he just keeps swinging and missing. Yeah. He just, he just he just no he gets one punch. Like, he does one punch. And then the guy yeah. tries to go yeah. up on him and he does like a triple backflip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, so, he basically so just true. owns the bully in front of like the whole school and then also like he like hits the bully and the bully hits somebody's lunch tray and the lunch tray goes like far up into the air and all the milk and all, everything on the tray is like mm-hmm. everywhere and he just he catches the lunch tray and catches No, everything. that's a different no, scene. No, no, that's oh, with Mary what? Jane. Oh, that's what Mary Jane slipped. Oh, I was like, point. Both of them like molded into my head. But Deduct the point. Basically, he owns the bully <laughs> in front of the whole school. You're just mad that I got you and I got you. <laughs> I'm, yeah, quick. I'm mad. <laughs> Look, I, I'm human, <laughs> God damn it. You gotta take that shot, Mark. I am. I'm taking my time. Come take, on. I'm taking my time. Take it. What? Oh, give him a score. I was going to say 7.5. Fuck you! <laughs> what? Seven and a half sips? What? No, no, three, two and a yeah. half sips? Yeah. All right. Mine. These are a lot better mm. than I thought, so. It's a mine. Great I hate it's everything. Hard. Getting a visual. It's are honestly visual? like a great. It's one of my, It's like, obviously, a lot of it's nostalgia, but it's one of my favorite movies of all time because since I watched it while I was so young, like 90% of what my idea of what a movie is is probably from. Was it like informed mm. by this movie? Mm-hmm. But um, my, my scene is the final fight between. Uh, the Green Goblin and and Spider Man. Uh, after he saves Mary Jane, the Green Goblin hooks uh, Spider Man onto his glider and he throws him into ding. like a what glider? Oh. Ah, he said ding. What? Are you kidding? Yeah. No. Oh what? my I god. I said ding like oh ten times. Yeah, but I couldn't hear. It. So <laughs> full shot. So the green. So he hooks him on. Like, throws him into this like abandoned building and it's like this very smoky, dark gray area. And it's okay. almost it takes Sam Sam Raimi back to his horror roots and it's like this very like just a super brutal scene of Green Goblin absolutely beating the shit out of Spider-Man. And you get the sense that he's, Spider-Man's like about to die. Like his his fa- his mask is all ripped and stuff and he's like all weak and shit. And it's, it's all practical effects. No CGI, just this brutal fight. It uses like every hit because of the way they shoot it and the way they, they edit it. Just every hit is like this, this crazy amount of emphasis on every one. It's, it, it just hits so hard. And then, and then, um, what do you call it? And then a Green Goblin's like, MJ and I, we're going to have a hell of a time because I'm going to kill her. And then he gets up and there's this big moment where Peter gets his strength back and he goes to stab, Green Goblin goes to stab him with the thing and he throws him back. And then you get the sense, dude, they, 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 I like how in this trilogy they make Sp- uh, Peter's webs like steel cables. Like yeah. the Green oh. Goblin claws them all down. You hear like, because like that's <laughs> I love it. And then he beats the fuck out of Green Goblin and like tumbles a giant brick uh, uh, wall uh, brick wall onto him and stuff like that and he gets out and just beats the shit out of him and then Green Goblin's like, Peter, stop, it's me! And he puts the the, the mask back up and it, he goes, Mr. Osborne, his best friend's dad, mm-hmm. and he's like, I would never hurt you, you were like a son to me. He goes, the Goblin did it, I had nothing to do with it. Don't let the Goblin take me again. Like, he's trying to do like a dual personality thing and then he's like, help me, Peter, like, I'm sorry. And then he goes, I'm like a father to you. And Peter goes, I had a father. His name was Ben Parker, like the big moment in the movie. And then Green Goblin goes, Good sp- Godspeed, Spider-Man. And he presses a button, and the gl- his glider comes to get Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And Spider-Man jumps out of the way, and it goes right into uh, Green Goblin's balls. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah. And he's about to die. And then he goes, and then uh, he got killed by his own glider. And then he goes, don't tell Harry his son. And then he 
just dies. Great, the great. Well, oh, so you know one how, of the best. One of the best the final. <laughs> it, 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 it was. It's it was funny. by his ways, but that's one of the best final fights ever because it's just so brutal and there's no C- and it, it will hold up forever because there's no bad CGI in it. Yeah. What? Now you got to take a full shot because he dinged you, but you said best. That's a good one. Yeah, right. Do full, do a full shot. It's funny because he says I had a father. His name was Ben Parker, but the gear out didn't even kill his. His uncle. He was just like, he was just telling him. I thought that was kind of hey, funny. what? Godspeed. Because he's man. like, I had a father. As if he was like trying to like, uh, be like, look what you took away from me. But he didn't have anything to do with that. Um, well, no, but that was for his character. Yeah, the I know. I thought that was he's funny. accepting the philosophy no, yeah, that yeah, he yeah, rejected yeah. when his, before Uncle Ben. Um, all right, take a full shot. And Amanda gave him a rating. 8.5. Can I have the, the call? Okay. <laughs> so, Kate and I tied as losers. So, we have to take four sips. Thanks. Johnny, you took your win really sips. well. <laughs> What's what do you mean? Because you won the round. I expect. <laughs> you expected it. You had to take <laughs> no, 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 no. two. Yeah, you got an eight. Because I was hoping nobody else had nodded. that scene. <laughs> I hope nobody else had that scene. Every time they said my scene, I was like, shit, shit, well, shit. I That's why I was gonna have that scene. So then I was yeah, like, well, I, I, second, I was in the go like, with oh, that, fuck, but then I changed it up to the. I, so that means I go first in Spider Man too. No, no, that means you go <laughs> last. Winner goes last. Yeah, but I went last the first. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> what? Winner goes last. Come on, that's bullshit. No, that's that's such bullshit. I went last on this one. <laughs> I <laughs> had the disadvantage. I'm gonna sound whine like even no. though I won. You no. Sound like, sound <laughs> Shut like the fuck up. was when he watched the movie. <laughs> um, I want to go first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna go into uh, the second part of that podcast. We're gonna talk about. Spider-Man 2 in 3, 2, 1. Hey guys, get the fuck out of the way! I can't see! There are cars there, motherfucker! Alright, Spider-Man 2. Is that, is that 2004? Yeah, two years later. They fast turnaround time. Yeah, that's pretty for quick. For such a good... For like... For such a good movie, because this apparently this movie... Well, everybody yeah. knew it at the time. This the, movie was a step above the the previous one. It was came out in two thousand four. Same director, Sam Raimi. They brought in a new screenwriter, Alvin Sargent, who won an Oscar for Ordinary People in nineteen eighty. Um, uh, it's two hours and seven minutes long, basically the same uh, same length. Um, this one did not have a uh, as big of an opening we- opening weekend, but I think that's because if you look, it's eighty eight million dollar opening weekend. But it was released on a Wednesday, so the opening weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, was like after it was out for already two days. Uh, so it's hard to judge where that would have been. It probably was around the same, uh, maybe a, a little less, because this movie made three seventy three domestically, uh, three hundred seventy three million dollars. So that's like thirty million less than the first one, and even worldwide, it made seven eighty eight, which is thirty million dollars less than the first one. So, um, so the, it, but but and the budget was bigger, but everybody thought that this it was a step above the first one and did and was even better than the first. Um, uh, and and I think that f- the first Spider Man is more important to me because like nostalgia and stuff. But I think this is the definitive Spider Man movie. It gets yeah. the ca- it explores the most about the character of Spider Man more than any other movie. Yeah. And it does it so well and so like, balanced. When people yes. talk about Spider Man, they mean this movie. Like th- this is this is the pinnacle of Spider Man. They haven't done it better since. It, it's perfect. Yeah, I and, agree. And the opening credits. The opening credits, they did the same thing as the, from, from the first opening credits with all the webs and stuff. But with this one, they did a recap of the first movie uh, with paintings uh, by Alex Ross, who repainted a frame. He's a comp- famous comic book artist. And he repainted scenes from the uh, original as a recap. And I thought that was a really good opening sequence. Yeah, it's so good. It's so, I it makes mem- it feel like an event, which it was. I remember being in my cousin's house... And they just had it on the TV. And I remember when my uncle's going like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, in response to, like, the visual effects and the quality of the movie, like, uh, as it looked. And y- you you hear people say that about movies. And then 10 years later, you're like, oh, it looks like shit now. Not this Not movie. Not this one. Not this movie. Because they linked visual, like, like CGI and, and uh, practical, practical effects. effects so well. Right. This movie, th- th- it's like this movie planned... They, they were like, we know this is going to be, like, the best Spider-Man movie in 40 years. You know, it's not been 40 years. So we got to make sure it stays, like, where it's at. And, like, as, as, as if they were telling the future. And it, it it's it's standing the test of time so far. And I just remember how many people were so impressed by it when I was seven years old. And I and that's more influential on me than the movie itself, that it's be, it became such a cultural thing for people to love this specific one so much. Because this one does so much right. Yeah, like, like like I can't think of a flaw in this movie. I really like it's. Well, I could think of a couple, good. but like you could think of a couple with any movie. Sure, and, but in, in in this one, 
Like, if you look, there's a few, like, shots where, like, okay, I, 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 like, that's CGI. You can obviously, like, there's one of, like, Doc Ock carrying uh, Mary Jane where you're like, that looks very whatever. But the yeah. train sequence, com- every part of the train sequence completely holds up. Yeah. Um, you said train. I know. I knew I was going to get beeped the most because, or dinged the most because I had the most, like, I, I did the, the whatever. But um, <laughs> but what do you call it? And the thing, the thing I really liked about this movie is that after the first one, right? Because people are like, oh, how are they going to top the first one? It doesn't open with this giant action sequence or anything. It just it opens with Peter trying to get it to, to deliver pizza in time. And I'm like, that's yeah, so genius. Yeah, yeah. And it's, cool. it's so good. Go, go. And, and then the two point, they have another cut of the movie, the two point two point one or whatever. And it, when he says it, he goes, go. They changed that's it. That's so lame. What the that's fuck? That's lame. But, and it, but it's such a good, and it's the exact same opening as Dirty Work, Norm MacDonald's movie, 30 minutes or less, or it's free. Oh, yeah, And he yeah, gets fired. Yeah. So, but um, but it's it's such a great way to show, like, okay, he's Spider-Man, but this Sp- get, Spider-Man is getting in the way of him being like having a normal yeah, life or holding was, yeah. a job or anything. And they really drag him through the ringer yeah, in this movie, Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Was, it, it, deal, it shows, like, the best portrayal of him dealing with, like, balancing being Spider-Man and having to live a normal life at the same time because he, there's no money to be made. In that movie, there's no money to be made being Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, actually, I don't think any I don't of the think movies... Even any movie. Yeah, yeah. Any of the movies, he, he sucked, doesn't yeah. become, like, a millionaire because he's Spider-Man. He yeah. still, like, his... He can't, like, support his grandma or his aunt. I mean... Yeah, he's he's hated by, the, by the, like, the, uh, the press. Yeah. Um, he can't uh, have any kind of life in a relationship or a job. Like, yeah. he has nothing. All he has... Is his like love for saving people, and and yeah, Harry yeah. hates him because he's taking pictures. Well, he doesn't hate him, but even Harry's you know kind of pressing on him because he knows he thinks he knows who Spider Man is, and he's taking pictures of. Him. So Harry hates him. Mary Jane, he can't be there for Mary Jane, so she hates him. His school teacher is saying you're well, you're lazy and stuff. Yeah, and it's bullshit. Every, he's losing his job. It's everything, bullshit. and it all converges at the perfect part I, I of that wanna, one dinner. I want to add to that. Because we didn't even mention the uh, the the famous Spider Man line with great power uh, comes great responsibility. I know, I know. What? Um, someone gonna ding me on that? No, no, no. Oh, no. thank fucking god. Okay, uh, with great power comes great responsibility, and that means so much to Peter. Where it's like he was gifted these abilities, and if he doesn't actually use these abilities for something good, then it's his fault when people get hurt. And that's what kind of what his uncle was telling him that when you have the chance to do something good, it is your obligation to do that good thing. Because you're a good human. And so we, you, you see him in this movie go through the ringer in every every aspect of life. But he does not let go of Spider-Man because doing good is more important for others than doing good for yourself. And I, and I think that, that that's very heavy. And a lot of people mm-hmm. overlook that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, the, well, and, and, and that's so well, like, like that fir- the first part where you've, like, or basically... Like I think it's at the second time he like starts to lose his powers or whatever. Yeah, it's it's right before that he's at the he's filming uh like this you know this party or whatever for uh J Jonah Jameson they're throwing a party for his son who's an astronaut which is kind of funny. Yeah. He's just like why is his son but, um but so that night right he goes to MJ and MJ rejects him is like hey, you stink man you didn't come to the play or whatever and and then Harry slaps him in the face because he's taking pictures of Spider Man and not telling him. And you know, J. J. Jameson is just like explain why though. Explain why because Amanda doesn't know why he'd be angry about those Spider Man pictures. Oh, because Harry thinks uh, Spider Man killed his father. Oh, so Harry doesn't Harry doesn't know that Peter's Spider Man, but he knows that he takes pictures of Spider Man. So he like thinks he knows him, but he's just not telling him who he is. Um, But that night, Peter J. J. Jameson's giving him shit. Uh, Harry slaps him in the face. M. J. Rejects him and then gets engaged right in the front of the thing. It's just this terrible night for him, and then he starts to lose his powers. And then, uh, and that that arc of him losing his powers and his life is just so great. Once he gives it up and stuff, and then he has to learn to like come back and do it. It's so it's so well done with the, that montage. The freeze frame uh, of him eating the hot dog. No, it's not a free. It's not the hot dog. It's uh, oh, Doctor oh, Connors. Yeah, yeah, Doctor yeah, Connors yeah, goes, yeah, "Good work today, away. Parker." And he mm. smiles, and then the, yeah, he, they freeze frame. Rain, so raindrops are falling on my head. Falling on my head, so good. That I, movie was originally written. It was a best original song in 1970 Oscars for Butch Casting the Sundance Kid. Also, a brief thing. In the comics, J. Jonah Jameson's son is an astronaut, and he gets werewolf powers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Turns into a werewolf. <laughs> what? Yeah. Turns into a werewolf. Awesome. <laughs> when he and he goes to the moon, he's just always a werewolf. I guess. Oh. Yeah, I, I guess so. Right? I guess that would make yeah. sense. What would happen? To, I don't even. Yeah, that's a whole different. That's like <laughs> a, a Van Helsing podcast. What do you guys think of Doc Ock? Amazing. 
love that. I, love I mean, that. like they yeah. could. I don't sympathetic. You know? Yeah, yeah. Going back to the um the the practicality and, and the way uh the characters look, the way they did with the X Men, like it looks normal. I think the way they did it to make Doc Ock look like a, a like a a, a realistic supervillain, I think they 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 straddled the line between unrealistic and perf and like uh perfectly realistic that it would it was just. I don't think they could have done it better. They did yeah. such a good job. They're bringing it back for the new movie. Exactly. I mean, mm. and I mean, if you think about it, his design for that movie isn't that different than the comics. Because in the comics, he's a, a fat guy in a in a lab coat, you know. And this, he's he's in a, a brown leathered coat. Like it's mm. the same thing. It's you know, you change the color of the jacket, whatever. Yeah. You know? yeah. And sunglasses. Yeah. Oh, I know what scene cool. Johnny's gonna pick for this, cool. by the way. Oh, I'm, I'm not gonna say it. Well, I'm somebody yeah. else. If I'm, going, if I'm going last, somebody's always gonna pick it. But you know what? My concern, the thing I liked about this movie, like Doc Ock's character is so well, like well done, but the kind of like situation around how he enters the story is kind of like really dumb. Like the, the arms are great, and that's why I don't like about the trailer in Spider Man No Way Home. Like in this, the the his arms have personality because they're these real things that you have you can attribute a style to because they're AI. practical. But well, I mean the, the actual effects done are like AI. with practical and stuff. AI. AI. <laughs> Holy oh, shit! I that was, was that say. was a good one. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, wow. But in the Spider-Man trailer, as you can tell, it's just all CGI, and you can't attribute a style or a personality to the art. So that's like I'm that's afraid that'll be badly. Oh yeah, years. I'm afraid it'll be it'll be lost in translation. But like, he answers a story because oh, he's he's creating this new type of energy, and you have tritium, and then he's gonna make a he's gonna ignite a giant sun, a little mini sun oh, in ding, the middle ding. of the most. Ding. <laughs> Said cool. Now you have to take a full what? shot. You said cool. Now when did I say cool? You just said it was cool. I, I yeah. also dinged him too wait, for what? sun. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, when did now I say cool? Now you have to take a shot and a half. Oh my god. <laughs> wait, when did I say cool? I'm sorry. You, you said that was cool. Yeah. yeah. When? When? It was cool. When you were describing the um right before you said the mini sun. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> so you have to take a shot and a half. But now. it's like he has this mini sun, right? And. And he's like, oh, it's going to provide us limited energy. I had never done this like actual, like an actual test before, but let's do it in the most densely populated city, whatever. And then all you people just stand 20 feet away. I'll put some goggles on. <laughs> goggles on. It's fast stabilizing. Yeah. Fast, fast, it's fast in your seatbelts. I got these arms that I never tried before it in. <laughs> stand them in my back and I'm going to do this with them and stuff. Yeah. Like it's such a fucking yeah. dumb idea. Like, what is the objective? And he's like, so it's like, if it's supposed to be like an energy short source, is he just going to like stand there for eternity, like forever, just like doing this with the <laughs> thing? Massaging it. It doesn't make any, I mean, but yeah, I mean, like you know, it doesn't make sense. It's so dumb, but I'm willing because it's a, it's such a good char character. I'm willing yeah. to overlook that. Well, but. is he like in that scene? I can't remember exactly, but is he like pitching the idea to like? I think he's like demonstrating. He's showing it to the investors. Yeah, investors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, investors. So that yeah. scene, <laughs> that scene, I have seen. Here's this microchip that you know saves me from being controlled by this AI. I put it at the, the most exposed part of my body. It's also <laughs> not resistant to heat, and I'm just gonna turn <laughs> my back breaks. to the sun at one point <laughs> yeah. so that the arms can overtake me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're ruining the movie, man. Stop. It's a fucking fantastic movie. <laughs> it's I so think. So good. Don't a shot and a half. Go yeah. a he, shot and a half. Because, Jesus, no, wait, what? Because because the last Sean's time he fun. got you, you didn't get it. He did, when did he get me? Um, the, the, the like I think I don't know, ten minutes glider. Ago. Yeah. I took a full yeah. shot that or with the sun. No, he got me. He uh, got just take a full Danny shot. Danny got me and then he got me and I took a full shot. I could have, I could have swear there's something. You didn't take it yet, but I could have swear there's something. I else. took a full shot Earlier, before. Okay, oh, hey, but you got to do cool. another one now. Yeah, yeah. We got each other. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look, all yeah. My words. All my words. That's all wow. your words are gone? Wow. Nice. I picked Good job. Words. Is that the first Danny. time it's ever happened? <laughs> no, it's happened before. It has it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, no, I was going to say, I love that the. Pentacles are practical effects in this. Cause, yeah. Because you can really tell, especially at the close-up shots when they're like doing little snappy snap things. It, it just looks so They cool. all have different personalities. Yeah, like one personalities. of them. Yeah, one of them grabs things. One of them has that, yeah, that yeah, stabby the, the, blade. The one of them stabby, does a little, little stuff. Fingers. I like how they light a cigar. They like drink whiskey yeah, for them and stuff. Yeah, that's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. And then the cameo by Joey Diaz on oh. the train. Oh. <laughs> You got if you sucker. want him, you gotta go through me, cocksucker. You gotta sucker. go through me, cocksucker. All right, so we've got a good amount of years left to go, so let's do our scenes now. Um, Kate and I <laughs> got the lowest score. So, Kate, do you want to go first or want me to go first? I can go first. What? I can go first. All right, go ahead. Um, oh, ooh, I'm sorry. Can I just say one yes. thing? Wait, did this you guys take your sips of beer? Yeah, we all did. Okay. This is the first <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> movie, or the only Spider-Man movie out of the first five that doesn't end with a funeral. Huh. Oh, wow. Interesting. Well, what do you know? That's that. sad. <laughs> Wow, well, my, my scene is completely, like, irrelevant to everything we just talked about, like, entirely. But this one's about MJ, uh, Spider-Man's lover, 
Except she's uh, semi in love with this other dude who she's going to marry. Her, her fiance, who's this perfect human who looks like an army soldier, like Ken doll. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good looking dude. He is a good looking dude. But so, you remember. Oh, shit. Did we, did we describe the upside down kiss in the first one or no? No, we, we didn't. didn't. Oh, That's okay. Shame we did. So, have you seen that? Oh, yeah. Upside yeah. Down? Seen okay, that. so do you know that scene? Yeah. Okay. This is kind of fucked. Because I remember watching this in the, in the movie. I didn't know this was in it, but. So basically, she runs into Peter Parker a couple of times. Peter Parker's saying the right things, the wrong time, but she's you know got those seeds are planted in her head, and she's sitting there. She's like, "Fuck, dude, I'm with this guy that I kind of like, but I want to be with Peter." And she goes, "You know what? I'm gonna try something." So he's laying there on the couch. He's just lying on his back, minding his own business, being a good Samaritan, <laughs> being a good fiance. And she wraps around, you know, like puts his hand or puts her hand like around his thing, wraps around to the head of the um, the couch by his head. Mm-hmm. Leans forward. He's like this. Oh, I've seen I, this. And I go, oh my fucking yeah. god! She's about to kiss him upside down to see if it's any good. And this to see bitch if it's any good kisses yeah. her, kisses him. And as soon as they do the kiss, he's like, mm, wow, that was really good. And she's just like, mm. and I was like, <laughs> he, goes, he goes, I'm back on the moon. She's like, fuck that. Yeah, sucked. she literally <laughs> said shit. And I, I was like, damn, bro, that literally brings Mark. me back to like my ex. She did yeah. some <laughs> shit like that, but it wasn't no. like Spider Man style. But it was some oh. shit like that where she was like. Let me see how this is compared to my ex. Out. And I was like, this. Oh. Yeah, and I oh, yeah. did actually see that scene. So I know, yeah, I know it's exactly. It hurt. Right. I hurt watching. And I was like, oh, dude, yeah. that yeah. sucks for him. That really he's so sucks. innocent, yeah. too, bro. He's such a good dude. And he's just getting fucked. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, poor he gets guy. fucked at the end, too. I'm like, no. <laughs> that After everybody's done with their scenes, I want if the, nobody addresses it, I want to say something about the ending of this, of this movie to Amanda. Okay. All right. Um, God damn. Was that it? Yeah. yeah, that's it. All right, Amanda, give him a rating. Just hit my elbow. Um. Is she on what? On this. Oh. That's, a, no, that's a good scene. That's an underrated scene. It, it is good, really and I, good I've scene, seen yeah. it, so um, I remember I was just like, wow, that really fucking sucks, yeah. but it was like a good scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to rate it uh, 7.5. All right. So obviously I have to take this away from all of you. The train <laughs> scene. Obviously. Uh, obviously. I'm like, why would I <laughs> not use this yeah, scene if I'm going second? I'd be so it. stupid. This is the most famous scene in all of Spider-Man history. And I I'm, I'm telling you, I mean the cartoons. No, you're probably right. The cartoons, yeah, yeah, the movies, live action movies, um live action TV from like the 70s. This is the most famous sp- <laughs> piece of sp- What's going on? I farted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you kidding? Yeah, I'm Just so go- glad I'm on this. What? Just go outside. I have to fart anymore. Tell you <laughs> tell so you this, this is the Biggest scene in all of Spider-Man history. Might be. And he, Spider-Man, is chasing after Doc Ock on a fucking train, okay? And there, it's a subway, but it's it's on the outside of, it's like on a... It's the above ground subway. Yeah, so it's above ground subway. And they're fighting on a moving train. And the entire... I'm so I'm fucking again. Sorry. The, the, <laughs> the, sorry, yeah, the, the entire sorry. thing, the entire thing is um like high energy, um high high action. And the reason why, one of the reasons why this is my favorite scene and most people's favorite scene, I think, is because you actually see Spider Man like be, look, and act kind of like a spider. Like it's so acrobatic. But okay, so here's the story Doc Ock is trying to escape and Spider Man is chasing after him. They're fighting on top of the train. And they go on the side of the train, inside of the train, on the uh, top of the train, whatever. There's this one part of the scene where it, it's really controversial, where they're on the train, and Doc Ock throws Spider-Man towards the direction the train is driving. So, based on whatever, science or some shit, Spider-Man should consistently be in front of Doc Ock, because Doc Ock threw him in front of him, right? Mm-hmm. So, he throws him in front of him, and then the scene cuts, and it reopens and somehow Spider-Man's behind Doc Ock. So that like makes no sense. But it's funny and it's and everyone always talks about it. Um and by the way, everyone that explains their scenes, I'm gonna put everything in post so people know what we're talking about. Um nice. so they're fighting on the train and you gotta remember Peter Parker's main priority is other people. So Doc Ock is taking people out of the train, throwing them off the train. Peter Parker's saving them, and then he has to flip back to the train. So it's nonstop him trying to get to the train. Then he gets inside of the train with Doc Ock, and he's fighting him, and you see the acrobatics, you see the choreography, it's so fucking sexy, and Doc Ock rips the brakes off the train, and he's like, he would say, you gotta train the catch or something? You gotta train the catch. You gotta train the catch. So Spider-Man is like, great, Doc Ock escapes, and now, because Spider-Man's Spider-Man, his main priority is making sure people stay safe. 
So he goes on si- he goes onto the front of the train and stands outside of it and starts whipping his webs on the buildings to try to stop the train. He's like fucking Jesus trying to hold that Just train, screaming, screaming, ah, like holding the train. His his costume is ripping and everyone's freaking out. His physical breaking it, point. It, yeah, he's literally the the strongest he's ever been seen in these movies is right now. He stops a train moving how many miles per hour and with how much weight behind it. And he stops it, obviously, he's fucking Spider-Man, and he's about to collapse, but everyone holds him together. But you missed the part where it literally crashed through the last column. Yeah, it, and it, it, it the crashes. The train is hanging off like this. And they and it just kind of stops right here. Yeah, just yeah. Like, Holy End of the shit. track. So, yeah. so the 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 passengers uh, take Spider while he's unconscious, and his mask is off. He's like, "Oh my gosh, he's just a child. He's just a kid. Even though he's in his 30s. He's just a kid. My thirty-five year old friend <laughs> named thirty-five year old son. <laughs> yeah, he's just like he's just he's just a kid. This by kid, I mean that guy who's the same age as me. So, <laughs> so, so they all like, don't worry, Spider Man, your secret's safe with me. And they give him back his mask they found. And Doc Ock's like, "Oh, you saved everyone. Well." Now I'm going to take you with me. Uh, and by the way, Joey, this is Joey Diaz's big scene. He's in the scene, Joey Diaz. So that deserves a couple extra points. So he, Doc Ock takes him, knocks him out, and that's the end of the scene. But it's the biggest scene in all of Spider-Man history. And that's it. Give me, give me a rating. What's the, what's the scuttlebutt over what's there? The secret? I'm trying to figure out a scene to do. Gotcha. <laughs> Stole my but, scene. But big, biggest scene in all. In the, oh, fucking Again. Incredible. You couldn't have fucked this one up if you tried. So that's just. Even though Mark explained, here, explained it terribly, I did. We, t- we still I, say I it's did. a good you were also I, interrupting, so. I was helping him. <laughs> you need to leave. <laughs> I was helping you, you, you fuck. Fine, I want to help you. You need dick. to leave. Get out. I've also what? seen this scene, <laughs> so I yeah. know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a nine. Yeah. Who got a 10 for his. What shitty scene did Kate get a 10 for? He didn't get a 10. I didn't get a 10. Who got a 10 just now? Nobody. Nobody. What the fuck are you talking about? you drunk? Yeah, what the hell's wrong with you? Nobody got a 10. I might be drunk. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> got anything other than an eight, I think. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I think got, eight and a half. I thought somebody got a ten. So you're 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 up eight. in the top. So all right, everyone, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Johnny. I uh, know who's got the yeah, the third. Can I just go? You had a good no. scene yeah, too. You could have. It's yours. It's yours. All right, no, go. Troy, it's your turn. Troy, Troy. Or is it Daniel? Troy, it's your turn. Honestly, don't know Close. what scene to do. Take I don't it, know do what it, scene to do. You can, you can, you can pass it on to Troy then, and you can no, go do, next. pass it to him. Do this. I, okay. I don't know. I'll do the scene then. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> right, go ahead. <laughs> um, so about two thirds of the way through, I think it might even be the preamble to what y- the train scene. I think. Um, Peter and Mary Jane are in a restaurant eating dinner or lunch, actually. Um. And they're going over their troubles, you know, because they've been, like he said, you know, she's been with other guys throughout the movie, and she's like, you don't have time for me, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, listen, like, and, and you could see he's working his way up to telling her that he's Spider-Man, but he just can't do it. And, you know, he's trying to explain himself without actually explaining himself. And whatever happens, she leans in for a kiss from him, right? And mind you, this is like a nice, calm scene. You're, you're invested in what they're saying, right? Mm-hmm. Like, wow, like this is, these are big moments for our characters here. And then, you know, she's leaning in for the kiss, and it it's cuts to Peter's face close up, and you see his eyes widen. Shot pulls out, and because they're, they're, his back is facing a window, and you see a car just coming for the window. Doc Ock has thrown a car, and he dives over the table, grabs her. You know, it, it's a spider sense that gives it away, which he's been having trouble using the entire movie. It's been coming and going. Hasn't been, you know, his powers have been failing him the whole movie. So this is like, oh, it's back. Um... So anyway, he dives over the table, grabs her. They're flying through the air. You know, the car is coming at them. The tire's like this, you know, and, and it's slow motion. He just dodges it. All the glass is going. And, um, you know, they, they land in the rubble. All the stuff falls on him. And Doc Ock grabs Mary Jane and, you know, whatever. He, he, I'm sure he says something. I don't remember what he says, some, some line. And he's taking her off, you know. He's smashing through cars, taking her away. And it, the camera goes back to the pile of rubble. And Peter Parker, boom, comes out of the rubble. He's all buff and sick. And the chase begins to get Doc Ock. Okay, so I ha- yeah, I have seen this scene. Um, I remember liking it, but it wasn't like the top scene. But I would still say it was about a seven. Seven? Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. My scene, just because I couldn't really think of any other ones, <laughs> is the scene where, I mean, it's still a good scene. Like, it's it's obviously very important to the whole movie but it actually i'm pretty sure it's directly after the train scene 
where Doc, yeah, Doc yeah. delivers Spider Man to Harry. Okay. And it's like it's just really tense because he's all tied up. And he, he lays him down on the couch, and Harry's. I don't know. Do you guys remember like exactly what he's saying? If you want to help me out, mm, I don't know what he's saying. He actually. goes, uh, Harry. He, Doc Ock brought him to Harry because Doc Ock needed the tritium to trigger the as the fuel for the his mini son. So once he brings Harry, he gives him the, uh, or once he gives uh, Spider Man to Harry, Harry gives him the tritium so that and Doc Ock, Doc Ock fucking leaves, and then Harry picks up a knife. Harry picks up a knife, and he's about to, like, commit murder. <laughs> murder he's about Spider-Man. to kill Spider-Man, get revenge for his father, basically. Right. And he's like, I want to see who you are. And he pulls up the mask and sees that it's his best friend. Mm. And it basically, instead of him murdering him, it shocks him so much that he, like, falls back and he's crying. And it's just like, it's a it's like a tense, emotional moment. Yeah, I, That's like, a big that's a scene. The characters. It's a big moment for both the characters. I just. I couldn't think of anything better because this guy <laughs> had to take it? the best yeah. scene. Yeah. And I, I wanted to say something about Joey Diaz. That's why I picked the whole scene. <laughs> but, but it's cool, too, because it's, it's cool too because after, when he says, holy shit, it's, it's Peter, Peter fucking stands up and just rips off all the fucking stuff that was holding barbed, like barbed wire. And he yeah. literally goes, you killed my dad? And he goes, bro, we literally have bigger things to talk about. Right in front of his fucking best friend, but his dad. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, shut the man. fuck up. Yeah. You probably could have said something yeah. better. One yeah. time, one time some guy murdered my dad, and I found out it was Danny. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's <laughs> fucked. <laughs> that's yeah. fucked. Yeah, my bad about that. Then, yeah. then I hit my head, and I got amnesia, which is why I'm not oh, angry. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> like in Spider-Man 3, oh, spoiler. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Um, um, I do apologize for him stealing your it's original. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how that's my fault, but <laughs> no, I, I apologize. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to say a six and a half. That's fair. All right. Uh, I wasn't expecting a good score, but now <laughs> I can take the best scene next time. So, <laughs> all right, go ahead, Johnny. All right, um, I think my scene is on par with like the famous scenes, like from Psycho in the shower, where it's all these different shots for like such a small amount okay. of, of footage. Um, and Raging Bull, like the scene, and uh, it's it, the, the two comparable scenes of that are Raging Bull and Psycho, where you know the boxing match and uh, Jake LaMotta getting knocked out. I think this scene is comparable and on par with those scenes, which is. Uh, when the arms kill all the doctors in the hospital room. Yeah, I knew you were And with it's it. a straight-up Sam Raimi horror, horror scene. It is... I remember watching... I used to skip over the scene when I was little because it was also fucking scary. It's about. so... It's all the... It's it's probably like a minute, maybe a minute you know, you know long or something like that. And it's just total... Like, no words, just... Just people getting killed. Some lady getting screaming as she's oh, dragged into worst. the darkness and her nails are clawing I'm the floor. I'm only playing this because she's seen it. Uh, John Landis getting killed and stuff like that. Oh, it's so good. And he's unconscious the entire time. And you really get the sense that these arms are like just these cold machines that are just killing these people. Yeah. Like, And it's just shot so well. It's edited so well. And there's such a... Like such an intense energy to it the entire time, and it's it's comparable to those scenes because it's all these different shots that just cut, 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 mm-hmm. and each cut is like the perfect one to. Oh my god, it's such a masterful scene, and and even if it's like oh people are like oh it's Spider Man two, I think it's one of the best, well like most yeah. well made scenes ever, man. It's so, and it's all done with you know mostly practical effects. It's all the arms are a mix of CGI and. It, oh, it's done so well, man. No score either, which really helps. I dead dead silent impactful. the entire time. Yeah. Uh, no, no well, I remember music seeing this, and I was like, what the fuck kind of movie is this? And I, I was know. like, it's Spider-Man? To just drop that yeah. in the middle of the fucking movie? Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, and half holy these people, lord. Half these people are probably med students. You know? Yeah. 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 They're doctors. They're fucking I'm kids. an intern. They're like 18 years old. Like, fuck, yeah. dude. I was just going to like sit in on the surgery. I guess I'm going to die today. I'm going to yeah. die. Fuck. It's such a Hitchcockian scene. Hailed in the stomach. And, so well done. And obviously the doctor is like a good guy to mm-hmm. start out the movie. So this is like one of the scenes where you realize he's like obviously being controlled by the AI more than like he's being influenced by right. the AI a right. lot. And and before this scene, his wife, uh, Doc Ock's wife got killed um, in the accident mm-hmm. that he created. And he wakes up and sees all this and realizes because he's been unconscious this whole time. He sees this and realizes, I just killed my wife and I just killed yeah. all these people. I have no control. And he just gets up on the table and he's all backlit all dramatically. And he just goes, ah, like screaming, like horrified, man. It's such a good scene. And then he goes out and I remember, the, go skip to that shot of the car. This shot right here. This I remember seeing this shot of the car in the trailer, that one, and being like, this is the greatest movie of all time. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, Doc Ock is real and Spider-Man's real. <laughs> um, anyway. all, right. all right, give uh, Johnny a rating. I'm going to have to tie you with Mark and say nine. All right. Excellent. We both Good win now. Do nothing, guys. Take the. I difference. go first before you next time. <laughs> okay. Because I won last. <laughs> take take the difference. Everyone but the winners. Well, Johnny didn't have to do that, but 
He did anywhere, I guess. So everyone but the winners oh. has to nice. take the difference. Um, okay, we're going to go to the next round. I am going to implement a new rule for next round to make sure we all stay on track because we all just broke the rule that I said we should do. We're going to uh, have a two-minute timer for explanation of our scenes. I'm going to have it on my phone. You think um, they were longer than that? Yeah, I think I thought I thought mine was pretty good. Yeah, I thought everybody's was pretty good. You want to yeah, do like a no, let's no. do a minute and a half then, because we do have to cut down the time. Um, <laughs> do a minute, guys. All right, minute. <laughs> Listen, we're here to we're here <laughs> to stay. We don't want to rush it. I don't care. I want pizza. So we are going. <laughs> hey, he stole that hey, guy's, guys, pizza. guys pizza. <laughs> pizza time. Dustin L. Rawlings, by the way. Pizza dime. Okay, guys, we are going to the third movie in three, two, one. Alone and a little embarrassed. I decided to get roaring drunk. All right, we're continuing, people. <laughs> All right, so Spider-Man 3, 2007. 2007, even more hyped than the Spider-Man 2 because yes. Spider-Man 2 was so good. And this movie, there was a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of fishy stuff going on during the production because apparently um, uh, the, 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 the reported budget was $250 million, which is the highest out of all of them. Um, but apparently... The bud. There was reports uh, from insiders saying that the budget ballooned to three hundred and fifty million, which would have made that, which would have meant on marketing and production alone they spent a half a billion dollars on the movie, which meant it was the most expensive movie of all time at Jesus. the time. And there was a lot of hype around this movie, and it had the biggest box office out of. And it's actually the highest grossing Spider-Man movie, uh, not counting Far From Home, because Far From Home made one point one billion. This made eight hundred and ninety million worldwide, um, and it had a hundred fifty one dollar, hundred fifty one million dollar opening weekend which was uh, higher than all the previous ones. But it, it had the lowest growing, uh, lo- lowest grossing domestic total at $336 million. It had an opening weekend multiplier of like around, uh, just above two, which is not, not as good as the first one, which had close to three or four, and the second one, which had about you know around the same. Um, but it was the highest grossing one. And I think this movie, people don't like it, but I think as time goes on, I think people, especially me, are starting to appreciate it a lot more. What, what did you guys not like? I love this. is my favorite one. Well, I, I would get to, I, like, I just want to say really quick, this is, I like that it's such a strange movie because there was a lot of studio interference and there's too much storylines going on. They, all the storylines don't intersect in, or, uh, uh, or, organically enough. And you can tell, um, and Sam Raimi was uh, uh, famously forced to do Venom by a, a producer he didn't want to do Venom. He said, "I don't really understand Venom." But they kind of want to do. He just wanted to do Sandman and, and Harry, and but okay. putting Venom in there kind of, I think, overstuffed the movie. And um, uh, what do you call it? And he's the only character like he made Venom the only character that definitely can't come back because he completely disintegrated him yeah. and made sure there was no trace of him left. All the other guys, their bodies are still alive and stuff. But um, I like that this movie has become like a strange, like weird artifact of like in movie history where it's like this is just a weird movie that people make fun of and stuff. But I, I think the, the further it goes, the, the more people appreciate it as just like a weird fun time. Cause like, let me tell you, I was watching this with my family and that first scene where he puts his hair down and you, start, <laughs> and you get the first scene of emo Peter Parker, <laughs> me and my family, like, Oh shit, here it comes. Like we had a great time watching that sequence. Cause it's just so silly. Yeah. And it's so good. Yeah. But what did you, I want to see, I want to hear everybody's thoughts on this movie. I'm curious there to see are, what everybody thinks. This is something that I, I definitely have. I mean, I, think this movie does kind of suck um but when's like the last it, time you watched it four years ago mm-hmm. maybe it's been, it's been a little while it's been a little while but like so like, there are things that i think are great like sandman amazing you know yeah great but like then there's venom which i think was realized like off like he's awful better than what we got like, two months ago or whatever that movie i was. agree i agree but um so like it's weird like the more stuff that comes out the more I am like I think back I'm like okay maybe Spider-Man 3 wasn't the worst thing in the world like it's not good the emo Peter Parker thing kind of sucks um th- there's definitely a lot of issues um yeah, yeah I don't know there's I don't know it's, I mean it's it's tough for me cuz I'm also so nostalgic for this cuz this is the first yeah. Spider-Man movie I saw in theaters so like I was what hyped you not, as a kid. what you not like Venom um why it just, it just didn't. I just didn't believe. Like, I didn't like Venom. Like, Eddie he, Brock was now. a little miscast and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he was miscast. The actual Venom character was like, it just, it's not Venom to me. It's just, yeah. it's just All, Spider-Man with a mouth that growls. Also, like, my problem not, with Venom is like. I'm sorry to. I, I no, thought you're you were good. done. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. But like, if you look at all the villains, like they're kind of they they're kind of created in their origins or within the same scope as like Spider-Man's life and stuff like that. But with this one, Venom just like comes out of the sky and that's it. 
Oh, he's yeah, just he just comes yeah. from space or whatever. There's no explanation. I I, th- I think there was an original idea that he was gonna come back on John Jameson, uh, 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 Mary Jane's fiance from Spider-Man Two when he came back from like the moon, right? So, which would would have been good. But I think the problem with Venom here is like you watch the first like 20 minutes, you're like okay, uh, we got this, we got this, we got this, and then Venom enters, and you're like okay, we got this now, and then from then on, like they just have to juggle so many things, and it feels like there's no there's no mm-hmm. connection between them and. I don't think they connect well enough. Like even at the final scene, everybody's there, but in the final thing, it's like, all right, Peter's gonna deal with Venom, and then he kills Venom, and then he's gonna deal with uh, 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 Sandman. He forgives Sandman, and then he's gonna go deal with Harry, and then the movies are, like it's yeah. It, there's a I don't lot think going they gel. on. And I thought the amnesia Harry thing was lame. That's so that's yeah. that's lame. The um, amnesia part did suck. Uh, yeah, I, that's but just, I didn't mind the the three pronged attack. I think that was the whole point of the final battle was to be a three pronged attack against him, right? So that Harry would come back and yep. be like, "Well, actually, I'll I'll save you instead." Yeah, and, but I know? think just including Venom ballooned. I see. It ballooned the movie too much, where the focus was kind of diluted to it was too spread. Like the you know the focus was too spread out over the stories, and I don't yeah. think compared I, to the first two, where it was just one one. Yeah, blend. the first two was very simple, but then yeah, yeah. yeah the, I mean, that's probably they're trying to step it up. They're probably like, "Fuck, we got two in a row that did well." We gotta step something up, and they're like, "Fuck it, throw another motherfucker in there." Just, yeah, yeah, but that one, yeah, yeah, <laughs> space. Yeah, the the venom definitely crowded it, cause it's funny. I didn't know what you said, Johnny, about the um, oh, the guy wanted him to put venom in there, but it's it, it's like looking at oh, like we just watched the trailer like um off air, like we had the trailer line, but you guys uh, didn't see it um. And it's weird that their biggest selling point for this movie was Venom. Right. Because that's, like, the most well-known character, like, if it's between Venom and Sandman. Um, so it's funny that he not only did he not want Venom, but because it's more well-known than Sandman, he had to make that the whole focal yeah. point and, of the movie. The black suit is great. I think all yeah, the scenes oh with yeah, the black suit are fantastic. I like the black just, suit. Like, it looks sweet. Yeah, it's just... It's so nice. It's yeah. almost... Honestly, the scenes with the black suit are almost worth, like, the yeah. flaw <laughs> of, like, having him be too much. So good. And I love... Like the Cadillac. I, I think the, the stuff they do, like, the action scenes in this movie, when we're talking about, like, the blend of practical and CGI, mm-hmm. you can tell, like, in this movie, they lean towards the CGI a little bit more. Like, there's a lot of things... Like, that's not him. That's obviously, like, a computer-generated version of him. But... I think the action scenes are actually. I, I think they're p- some of the best in the series. Like all the well, action the punch, and stuff. The fucking Sandman punch was so yes. uh, real. I remember yes. feeling it, and I was like, "Dude, I can feel that even, shit in my even the weight of the, it." The, the, when Harry, yeah. when he's fighting mm-hmm. Harry, and dude, when Harry hits his oh, head, yeah, that's see, dude, that's boom. He's yeah. hitting shit hard, man. Yeah. Like he hits his yeah. head, or he hits the he gets clothesline, hits his head, smacks the ground yeah. so hard, man. I saw yeah. actually, Got not to keep fucked. talking, but not I have to keep talking. I yeah. saw a really good idea for the amnesia thing. And it's like, the amnesia thing is dumb, and here's what I would do to change it. Harry hits his head, because then he hits his head, and he's out of the movie for like an hour, like yeah. basically. It's just yeah. like, all right, now give me more time to deal with Venom and Sandman. But H- Harry hits his head, and he gets amnesia, except he doesn't. He just fakes it the whole time. Not the whole time. No, this is, my, this is the guy's pitch for another idea. Oh, I'm sorry. If you were listening to me. I, I barely listened here's to Here's my you. idea. <sighs> Harry gets amnesia, but he fakes it. And he fakes having amnesia, and at the end of the movie, when when Sandman is hitting Spider Man and Venom is choking him, Harry comes out and he goes, "It was me, Peter. I did. I started all this. I didn't forget, you motherfucker." Like that was that'd be that, cool. That, that would be like, cool. That's fantastic. That's uh-huh. a fantastic idea. That could have been but a really good twist, right yeah. there. That could have been. But I do, I do, I, I. Oh, we forgot to do ratings for the movies, but. I think the first two Spider-Man are absolutely fantastic, like you know, almost a ten. But I think this one is more just like it's it's good, but I can't say it's like a great movie, you know. Yeah, objectively, as a great movie, maybe not as as high quality. It's still one of my. I think it's still my. I favorite still enjoy just because it. because it's so action packed. There's a lot of good in it, and I love how. Oh no! Oh my ah! gosh, Danny, Danny, Danny bro. No, right. Danny. For anyone listening, just opened a beer bottle with his <laughs> teeth. I mean, it's the thing. It's just like, oh. why would you do that? Oh, oh wait, we haven't even talked about the dance scene yet. I was gonna say the ten minute dance scene. The ten minutes. You said what? dance. See, this is why. All right. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why you should talk so much. No, I'm just go ahead, take <laughs> half a shot. Okay, so I, I this new movie is really nostalgic for me more so than the first and the second because my father secretively brought me to the movies and I, I wasn't allowed to tell any of my friends or my sisters or anything because it was just somebody supposed to be like a father son thing. And we had to go see it, bro. Best day of my life. <laughs> Best day of my life. We went That's to go cool. see the movies in theaters. Me and my dad bonding. Uh, it like warms my heart. Like it actually makes me really happy. And um, and then I got to pretend like I didn't see it, so I could see it again with friends. It was great. But 
it was so nostalgic to me because I went to go see the movie, and that was like around the age where I was like able to like really understand like things that are happening and what's going on. Like I was able to like that's where my long term memory really started forming very well because I remember seeing the movie, I remember playing the video game, I remember having like trading cards mm. for it, I remember uh, finding toys for it, like. So much of, like, my childhood started to, like, really spark around that age. And I remember I had this one hologram card that showed Spider-Man swing in and out with the symbiote suit. And it this, this movie was really big sentimentally for me. So was it the best? No. But I remember coming home from the theater and then hearing everybody talk about it. And all the adults were saying, oh, wasn't that good? Wasn't that good? And I was confused because I'm a kid. And I had a great time. But I think... Part of hearing them say that kind of tainted the movie for me as, when I was young because I felt like I had to agree with them. Um, but I had a blast. Now, though, objectively, not, I know that's not uh, appropriate. Uh, subjectively, I guess, I can see why this isn't the best one. But God, did I have a good time. So much fun. I also think, and now I'm thinking about it, this might have been the first Marvel movie with, like, a Stan Lee cameo that he actually, like, was on screen for more than half a millisecond. Like, he actually says stuff... What was it? Well, no, it was, uh, you know what it was? It was, uh, oh, wait, no, maybe, it be, what year did this, this was 2007, right? 2007. When did the second Fantastic Four come out? It might have been Ooh. 2007. It might have been 2007. It might have been, it might have been the because same Because in the year, second yeah. one, he, he's invited wedding, to read right? Richard, and he goes, he goes, he's invited to the wedding, and he goes there, and he goes, what's your name? He goes, Stan Lee. And the guy's like, yeah, okay. But he goes, no, that's really me. <laughs> it's me. Lee. Lee. The no, no. longest Stan Lee cameo is in The Amazing Spider-Man, the first one. Oh, it's yeah. his best cameo. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get to that. So. Um, yes. What was the release date? But yeah, so it was it was a great movie for me. It was a lot of fun. And yeah, it, it was the most nostalgic oh, no. Spider-Man bad. for no. me. Um, uh, one more thing. Wait, we haven't talked about the dance scene, though. Did you take the shot for that, by the way? No. We will. You, we, you can. But one more thing about the nostalgia. I remember buying the video game for this, and I was home alone with my father for like another. On what system? PlayStation Two. An, another father son thing, and it, we were home alone. My mother and da- daughter, my mother and sister, were away doing some shit, and I we got chilies, we ate burgers, and played Spider Man Three on the PlayStation <laughs> Two in night. the living room. What a fucking what? Night. So yeah. good. Continue. That's, so cool. Go ahead, guys. That's a great night. Great, great night. <laughs> yeah. I oh, want to hear awesome. everybody's chilies? thoughts on. on the dance scene. Embarrassing. I mean, it's, like, well done, I remember, but embarrassing for a Spider-Man movie. And by the dancing, I mean, like, all the scenes of Emo Peter Parker. Hey, so bad or good? All right, well, we'll get into that, because I'll do mine. Okay. So weird. Uh, So weird. Well, like, but here's, like, obviously, when I was, like, because... I didn't know what to think. It's such a strange... I think the way it's edited, because I think the way Sam Raimi intended... Because this is... This keeps up the trend of, like, the wacky montage in the middle of the movie... Like, though, you've got the first one with, like, Spider-Man was here. He's a, he's a protector. He protects the people. Like, that thing. Then you had the raindrops are falling on my head, which is all goofy and dorky. And in this one, I like that this what do you, <laughs> I like that in this one, like, <laughs> Peter Parker is just his <laughs> dork, right? And this is what he thinks being cool is like. But it's weird because all the women react differently to him because some of them think he's cool and then some of them some think he's just some out. weird yeah. fucking weirdo. <laughs> so you're not supposed to you, you're not supposed to you're supposed to think that it's dumb, but it, you don't understand because you're like, oh wait, but it's just I think it's the way it's edited is weird. Yeah, that, that's uh, a good that's point. Good. I think the point of it is like, okay, this is obviously dumb. So I but just I just getting the sound, like getting like what you're describing it as. I think it was just for girls. Any girls that were watching it was probably I, well, what I don't know, but it has yeah. a lot to do with this. Ca- no, I don't think that's true at no. all. Yeah, because no. it had a lot to do with this. Because the whole point is that he's like the like the, Peter's the villain of this movie in some way because he gets all caught up in his ego of being Spider Man, which I actually like like as like a next step for his character. Mm-hmm. And the Venom thing works in the movie in terms of it. It it, it pushes his character in that direction because the Venom mm-hmm. uh, corrupts him and stuff. But I think it was supposed to show that um, it. These are this is basically what Peter's negative attributes to uh, their their what do you call it? to their extreme mm-hmm. are in real life. And the fact that somebody a guy like Peter who's a good guy, the worst version of himself is like a mild mild asshole. Mm-hmm. Is like oh this is what that's like. So he's actually like a genuinely good person, but this is just what him as an asshole looks like. He's yeah. just like a slightly, but. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, but I think it does service his character in a way, and I think it was on purpose that it was supposed to be all weird and cringy. Mm. I'd like to cut in and, and add to that how in the beginning of the movie, <clears throat> before he gets the symbiote, and they ha- they're they having like a celebration for him. He's like, they love me. They, they love really me. love me. And he fucking kisses Gwen Stacy. Yeah, and he yeah. kisses Gwen Stacy, who he's basically cheating on his girlfriend with a, with a kiss on stage in front of a whole bunch of people. And before he even has the symbiote, he's literally 
being he's being pompous. So it's setting the audience up to be like, the symbiote is gonna like you said take Peter Parker's negative attributes and amplify them. That's right. what the symbiote does. Um, and so yeah, so so at the beginning of the movie, they already set you up with he's starting to become pompous. Right. Yeah, yeah, and I think and I think that's an element of the movie that was already there. And then once they put venom in, Sam Raimi's like, all right, let me just make this. You know, here's here's another part when um, uh, what's uh, Mary Jane goes to Peter Parker, her boyfriend, and is crying to him and wants to wants him to console him. And Peter Parker's, well, you just got to get back up on that horse. And she's like, I want you to comfort he, me. Yeah, I don't can. want you to tell me like just understand that I'm in pain, feel what I'm feeling, be right. be empathetic. Sympathetic. Yeah. Don't try to fix problems that you don't know anything about. And he he's just so pompous about it. So yeah, it already starts to. The series already getting that like that. Yeah, and I think that was a really good. You know, that was a good scene. I think that taking his character that way isn't the wrong thing. There, no, I don't think that's not. what the problem with the movie was. He's like, well, you know, when Spider Man's down, she's like, shut the fuck up. He's like, listen, shut to me, up, you fucking idiot. Like, okay, Amanda, right? Imagine. If you were having a bad day, and I'm like, well, you know, when the podcast is bad, would you not want to bite my fucking <laughs> face off? <laughs> God like, damn shut it! The fuck up. Yeah, it'd be horrible. Can so I that's basically what he did. I, I just got to say that this movie has, I think, my favorite J. Jonah Jameson scene, where he has all the p- uh, bottles, oh, yeah. pills lined up on his desk. So oh my God, and, and I yeah, love that scene. And yep, and the intern. <laughs> okay, or or Betty Brant actually. Okay, it's time to take a pills. Not that one, and, <laughs> yeah. the, and the whole desk like, shakes. Not that one. It's like everything. Tra- Betty was, a, Betty was a heartthrob. A it's so funny. Yeah, it's a, it's such a, a good. good scene. I love that. I, that, that cracks me up every time. It's so scenes? good. Are you ready for scenes? Wait, can I say one more thing about it? Yeah, and then and then uh, we go. Harry's butler, B- Bernard or Bernard, <laughs> Bernard. for two Bernard. movies, he <laughs> waits to tell him. <laughs> Listen, Harry, Murder. I know now that you've taken a grenade to the face. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that your father's, I cleaned his wound. The wounds came from his glider. And he's like, why are you telling Bruh. me this? And he goes, I don't even want you to think your father was an idiot. Like, <laughs> why? Here, like, Why'd okay. you wait? <laughs> like, here's the thing. There was a good, there was a, apparently there was an idea that uh, burn like the way Willem Dafoe, uh, he would see, uh, he would see his dad, like hallucinating. He would see his dad in the mirror, and that represented, like, the worst part of himself. There was an idea floating around that Bernard or Bernard w- was also a hallucination, but he would represented the good side of himself. Oh. And that's why when he tells him whatever, he would have went off to fight Harry because he's like, oh, I've always known this or whatever. Like, I just r- unlocked it. But why wait two movies to tell him that? Why don't you tell him immediately? Like, you know <laughs> no. he's the Green Goblin. Like, there was, in the, edi- in the editor's cut, there's another cut, which is apparently a little bit better. Harry just looks at a picture of him in... Uh, Peter and Mary Jane. He's like, you know what? I'll go help him out. Like, mm. I think that would probably would have been better than just like <laughs> telling him, like, yeah, sorry, I'm an yeah. 87 year old man. Who's but that, still but that scene caters to all the younger audiences. The younger audiences are like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did. I was like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We didn't even talk about the retcon in this movie. Oh, uh, I, I, yeah. The what? Uh, where they essentially went back and changed history. Where the guy that. Uh, Peter inadvertently killed in the first movie didn't actually kill oh, Uncle Ben. Yeah. It was a real Ben. The Sandman did it. Yeah. Killed Uncle I Ben. I like that, mm-hmm. actually. That was cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only I, re- I go back and forth on it. I don't know how I yeah. feel about yeah, it. I, just added some I recognize that it's probably, it, there's, like, it's probably not that well done, but I saw that when I was really young, so my base yeah, of like knowledge of that is like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm young. What do I care? So like, I'm kind of biased yeah, in that that's sense. That's how Don Johnny talks about himself when he's young. It, it, it takes yeah. away from the first movie. A little bit, yeah. And that guy dying... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It takes away from all that, but at least it's like I guess it gives Sandman some I more like depth. It. But yeah. I don't know. It's yeah, it's weird. Um, all right, let's do the scenes. Who got the lowest or the highest score? Or me, it was me and me you. And you. Okay, who so I go, I go before you. Yeah, okay, who got the lowest score? You did. You then you then me. Yeah. Okay, Danny, give us your scene. And right. You got a minute on the clock. Come when you're just gonna give myself a ten already because this <laughs> is a ten. No matter what you say, it's cool, Peter. <laughs> scene is called okay, you're cool, on the clock. Peter. Okay. He basically, it's when he becomes the jerk. He he gets like infected with this thing, whatever the symbiote, and he's walking through town, and there's cool like <laughs> funky song playing, <laughs> and he's just <laughs> feeling himself. You know, he's just walking through uh-huh. town, and he's just pointing <laughs> people. <laughs> he's just <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> feeling good. <laughs> Toby, w- Toby was microdosing. Yeah, he was just <laughs> microdosing, was feeling like great. He's just like. Ah, ah, his hair is all to the side. He looks thirty seconds. Stupid. <laughs> yeah, basically, I don't know. Have you seen the scene? No. Oh, <laughs> lucky shit. you. How can I make this better then? Because <laughs> uh, you can like, act it out. 
Yeah, yeah. Get up, 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 well, I'm going to say it's not a 10, but I'm going to go with an 8. <gasps> an 8? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. 8. All right. Troy, in <laughs> 3, 2, 1. So my scene is about Sandman. So Sandman is running away from the cops, and he falls, or he's not Sandman yet. He's a normal guy. He falls into the um, this, like, machine, this pit, turns on, it, it spins, and it... Go, it, it messes with his genes and sand's going into his genes, whatever, and he turns to a pile his of genetic, sand. Yeah, his genetic, not, 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 <laughs> yeah. okay. not his yeah, pants. Yeah, yeah, his, his genetics. <laughs> Later on, we, you know, it cuts back to that, that pit of sand. It's just a pit of sand, and you see grains starting to move, and the camera's really close in. It looks like a rock. 30 and seconds. It, it, and it zooms out, and you see it's sand, and it builds up into this, you know, the sand man, and he collapses, builds up, collapses again. He's trying to get up. And then, uh, and then eventually, the one thing that didn't disintegrate was a picture of his child. He had it in like a locket. Fifteen, and and he tries picking it up, and he can't because he's sand. <laughs> and eventually, he like you see he's pissed and he's sad, and then he uh, forms up into the Sandman. He grabs it, and he's coming out, and it, it, it forms him. And it, it's such a visually cool scene, and it's so emotionally resonant. And Done. I love it. Time. Well, you, you finished right on the dot. Yeah, I, 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 I had the speed. <laughs> How much that. time do we get? A minute. I have minute. the speed. We run. decided. We decided. We're gonna be here all night yeah, if we, we don't time it. We decided. <laughs> we decided the last episode. All right, last, last episode. episode. Last, uh, I thought it was a last, minute and a half. You thing. said. Um, no, yeah, I did. And then Amanda short. was like, "A minute." I'm like, "All right, that's a good idea." All right, <laughs> that's way too short. That's nice. Sure, give it, on me. Amanda, give the uh, rating. Um, I'm gonna say a nine. Woo! Oh, shit. That's okay. pretty good. Okay, I'm just gonna show a picture so she can get a visual of who this the guy and the girl is. That cool? Yep. Okay, so this is the characters I'm talking about. Okay. All right, so Peter is being super cocky. He's on the phone with this professor, and he's like, hey, um, I, uh, I, I, what is this stuff? He goes, oh, this is like a really dangerous parasite. You shouldn't be eating this, like, or you don't like have this thing, do you? And he goes, oh, no, I don't have it, but he does this whole time. And he's with this girl who's like a super weirdo, and he doesn't <laughs> like her, but for some reason he's using her to eat cookies, and she's feeding him <laughs> fucking cookies, and he's like doing this music. He's like, oh, I'm totally cool. Everything's good. Give me a cookie. And she fucking <laughs> feeds him cookies and gives him milk. Literally, and it was the weirdest fucking thing ever, but she's dementia, and she's weird, and she has a fetish for him, and she <laughs> likes Peter. So she's doing it, and the whole thing was she's just so it. fucking bizarre. It was like, you're seeing just weird, but it was weirder because she's weird, but she loved it. And at the end, she was like, oh, like, here's fucking cookies. It was bizarre. It was like one of those movies, like, Get Out and stuff. That's uh, all I need. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> can, can I say one? Yeah, unless you got Ten seconds to spare. There's one part where he's, like, he's eating the cookies. She goes, I can make some nuts. And he goes, go make me some oh, more yeah. cookies, but with nuts in them, you fucking whore. Like, it was oh. so weird. I was like, what the fuck? She's loving it. Time. Yeah, she loved it. She loved the attention. Okay. Okay. So another weird. batch of cookies. It was go, uh, bizarre, bro. Bizarre. <laughs> I was going to say, just for it being, like, such a weird fucking scene like that, I'll give it an 8.5. All right, Fire. cool. That's cool. Thank you. Go ahead, Johnny. <laughs> All right, so this scene takes place between Harry and Peter, the two best friends, and Harry's the new goblin, and Peter's obviously has the black suit, and he's all corrupted and stuff. He goes to Peter's house. I mean, he goes to Harry's house, and they start fighting to like this weird jazz music, and it's like a weird, and it just has these shitty one-liners. <laughs> like he's like, "Look at little Goblin Junior," and he's like, "He's like the t- I used to when I remember when I kissed Mary Jane." <laughs> <laughs> Strawberries, Gonna and then cry. they start fighting. It's actually a pretty fun fight sequence. They're like, you know, he's Harry. Honestly, Harry gets beat the f- he gets fucking beat up in this movie. There's so many shots of like him like getting hit and it's quiet and then he smacks into another thing uh-huh. and then they're, uh, they're fighting and they go into Harry's lair <laughs> and uh, he, they're, they're doing something like, I present you in high school now I'm gonna kick your little ass and then Peter goes ooh like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. 15 seconds. Keep going. 15 seconds. Wait, no, hold on. All right. Well, uh, so, so, but then he, he, Harry's, he beats the fuck out of Harry and he's like, bye, whatever and then Harry takes a grenade and throws it, and Peter dodges it and webs it and throws it back at Harry. It explodes right next to his face, and you can see his Five body seconds. fly like 15 feet off the screen. And, uh, time. and then he leaves, and that's when the dance scene starts. All right, <laughs> time. And I, I gave you an extra five Two seconds minutes. for the ding. All right. What was the ding? Uh, yeah, what, what was it? Ass. Ass? ass? Oh. Who did I say ass? Yes. Huh? Uh, I think you said you beat it. He beat his ass. Yeah. Or something. Oh, oh yeah. nice. All right. What, fuck? what a crazy word. I wouldn't even think about using the word ass. Yeah. <laughs> I knew someone was going to say kick his ass. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah. Okay, go good. ahead. That take your half cool. shot and give him a rating. Oh my, my, dude, why is my cup so fucking sticky? <laughs> You're drinking liqueur and it's it's a lot of sugar. 
<laughs> All right, Amanda. Um, I'm gonna go with uh nine. Excellent. Nice. I didn't think Excellent. I was gonna get that good of a score. <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> All right, Amanda, you ready for uh, my scene? Yes. And okay, so my scene takes place again with a train underground with a subway, and. Spider-Man actually uses his black symbiote suit to his advantage more than usual in a different way. He uses it to stick to the shadows. He crawls on the walls and uh, hides in the shadows, avoiding the lights from the train so he could sneak around the Sandman underground in the train s- in the subway. Eventually, he comes out of the shadow and starts beating up Sandman, grinding his face on the moving train. You can see all the sand going, spitting everywhere and grinding everywhere, and... Um, I, it's actually pretty quick. And towards the end of the fight scene, they're in a puddle of water, and Spider-Man gets a big pipe uh, to the sewer and rips the pipe open with his fucking spider power, and um, all the water comes out of the pipe and washes Sandman away. Sandman gets forced into a grate, and you can watch Sandman collapse and crumble into the sewer and mix with all the water and become Incredible. a slurry. Um, it's incredible. Uh, oh, you talk, have five about, talk about why it's so important for Peter, because of Uncle Ben. Oh, because he because th- he thinks Uncle Ben he he killed Uncle Ben. Time okay. Fuck. <laughs> just say it. Just say it. No, yeah. like, we'll give you an extra five seconds. I don't. Yeah. Care. I he, want uh, her to know. S- spy, uh, P- uh, Sandman. Uh, Peter thinks Sandman was the one who murdered Uncle Ben. So he's like, are you like getting revenge? Basically. Yeah, like, so uh, the black you. suit is making him like go to this. I'm gonna go to this murderous revenge type <laughs> thing. What? What? That's one okay. of Mark's dads. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's that's the scene. Um, man, to give it a rating. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna tie eight and a half. Okay, so what, with you. what are the what are the scores then right now? I got now? nine. I got, I got eight. You got a nine. I got eight or eight and a half. I got a nine. You as got well. eight and a half. Eight, oh, I, I, think, got nine. I think I got eight and a half or eight. I forget. Maybe eight and a half. By the way, we have st- we saw yeah. four more movies. I know we gotta hurry up. Four? We, no. we gotta hurry up. We gotta hurry up. You'll get we your rent when you fix this. Let's, let's do let's do the Amazing Easy. Spider-Man's in one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but let me. I, I got Spider-Man. I don't even four. know Wait, those movies. That Spider-Man way. Four. They were gonna do a Spider-Man Four after this one, um, and it was up for. They were kind of floating. We're gonna do Spider-Man Four and floating a reboot around. And this one was gonna. The villain was gonna be Vulture, and it was gonna open with a montage of Peter arresting all the, like, these. Uh, these like D-list villains. One of them was going to be Mysterio, and Bruce Campbell was going to play Mysterio. And Bruce Campbell made cameos in all the Spider-Man in Spider-Man movies. He was the, the wrestling ring announcer in the first one, and the second one, he was the 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 guy outside of the uh, the Mary Jane's play that wouldn't let Peter in. And in the third one, he was the French waiter who Peter was like trying to do the stuff with. And I th- I don't know if the idea was that that was actually Mysterio or this just happened to be one of Bruce Campbell's cameos. But um, that would have been really fun, and I would have I would have liked that. Okay. Um, but okay. they ultimately did not didn't do that, and which leads us into our next movie, The Amazing Spider Man, which was the reboot. Okay. That they and did. Amazing Spider Man in three, two. Oh, boys in blue here. All right. Dang. Amazing Spider Man one and two was both were directed by uh, Mark Webb, of course. But um, the budgets were around the same. The first one was two hundred thirty uh, million. The second one was up to reports from two hundred million to two hundred ninety-three million, which is probably two hundred ninety-three million closer to. And both of them didn't. The first one made sixty-two million opening weekend, which wasn't great. Made two hundred sixty-two domestically, uh, seven fifty-seven worldwide. And the second one, which they were gearing up to be like a giant billion-dollar movie that's going to launch their entire Spider-Man universe franchise. $91 million opening, which was bigger, but it made $60 million less domestically with 202 domestically and 708 worldwide. It was considered a box office. Well, not a disappointment because it made money, but a disappointment in terms of what they wanted. Um, and I think the first one feels like an adaptation of a young adult novel. And I don't, I don't love, I don't mm, understand. I don't think the first one is that good. I do. There's a lot of stuff that I like about it. I like the, the relationship uh, between uh, Gwen and Peter. A lot. I think that's the best part about these movies. That's the most consistently good out of all of them. Yeah. Um, and I, but the, the my problem with the first one is that they spend too much time. It's a reboot, obviously, right? We've seen the origin of Spider Man, and in the first Spider Man I mentioned, he gets bit by the spider ten minutes in. In this one, it's like twenty three minutes in. Gotcha. So they take longer to mm-hmm. explain a story we already know. And the one thing about these movies I really don't like is that they linger on Peter's parents a lot. Mm. Or it's a mystery. Who are they? Oh, were they involved? Were they connected to? Him being Spider Man, it's like that's not what's interesting about Peter Parker. Like I don't want to know yeah. that. Um, what, what are your What are yeah. you guys? Right, thoughts so somebody give their. Oh, let me just opinion. say the first one I don't like. The second one I have a soft soft soft, soft spot for, and I actually kind of like the second one, even though because it's really fun to, at points. But I don't like Harry, and I don't like uh, uh, the Peter's parents thing. All right, so my go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Anyway, oh, you, you go. Anyway. You go. My, I mean, I was just gonna say my thoughts on it are that like 
I mean, I don't have many thoughts on it because I don't remember them well. Because I saw both of them and I just wasn't like it was nothing that made me want to keep seeing those those movies like how the original ones did. Yeah. Like I had, I felt like a connection to those ones. These the the Amazing Spider Mans are like, and that's why we're doing both of them all in one because. Yeah. No one's uh-huh. missing out on anything. Exactly. It's something I don't know if it was Andrew Garfield or what it was, but I didn't feel connected to the any yeah. anybody in the inti- I, I didn't mm. even I don't mm. remember anything from either movie. Mm. I had to literally YouTube the video to <laughs> find a scene. I have <laughs> no recollection of any scene except when Gwen dies or not Gwen. What's her name? MJ. Gwen. Yeah, Gwen. Yeah, Gwen, Gwen dies. Yeah. Gwen Stacy Gwen. in this one. Yeah, I don't even know her name. Mm. <laughs> like I do not remember this this series at all. Uh, this is wait. This is Troy's favorite Aunt May. By uh, the way, that's what I was gonna get to. <laughs> Why? Because they were gonna do an Aunt May prequel movie. Ew! I, I don't even talk about that. No. So I used to have a joke that I, and I actually mean it though. That I said <laughs> talking about with Mark in high school. Between comparing Aunt May's right, not not including the homecoming one, you know. So we got Rosemary Harris in the in the Sam Raimi trilogy. She looks so nice and sweet. Sweet old she'd, lady. She, she'd bake you a batch of cookies and yeah. you'd eat it and she'd knit you a sweater while she did it. Take this $20. Knit, knit, don't take it. it. Take the $20. Yeah. Uh-huh. See, yeah. she's so nice. <laughs> However, Sally Fields' Aunt May, she would like bake you a tray of cookies and use it as an ashtray. <laughs> and, here you go, you little bastard. And just like shove remember. it in your face. Like, well, she, to be fair to her, so Peter dirty Parker and treated her like an asshole. He did. He, he is an asshole in these movies. But I, I don't know what it is. I, I don't like her. She seems mean and nasty and gross. And All I don't right. like her. And it also features... Look at her. Yeah. They got the great mm. Martin Sheen to say, with great power comes great responsibility without saying those words. If you have the ability to do good things for yeah. certain people, then you have an outright obligation and responsibility to do those good things. And yeah, it's like, wh- why what? were they so scared to say it? <laughs> I don't know. Right? Just say it again. But so he was also well, way. I'll, he was way cool in this. In this. Oh my god, like, this he, guy's a fucking stud. He's yeah, there's no way he, he was like yeah, bullied. He yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. well, I thought he was supposed to be a dork. Yeah, like, why is he so cool? It's he's his playing Doctor Who. Yeah, I don't like his Peter Parker. I don't, especially in the first one. Like his Peter Parker's too cool. And he's too like weird of a like. He, I don't think he fits in the movie. Yeah, but I do think his Spider. I lo- I really like his Spider, especially in the second one. I've read everyone likes the Spider Man. His action scenes, him as a yeah, fighter. Uh, yeah, like him, the way, the way he talks and the way he just carries himself. Yeah. Especially the suit in the second one is the best Spider Man suit in any movie ever. I love yes. that. Really? I think it's. I think it's fucking fantastic. Look, look it up. It's, it's, it's absolutely the best. fantastic. It's the best. Um, I wish I had animated eyes, though. That's no, I actually thing. don't like animated really? eyes. Really? We'll I get do. to that later, though. Yeah. But let me give my... Uh, but, oh. No, this one didn't have animated it eyes. Didn't, it didn't. No. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying I wish it did. Oh, that would me, make it perfect for let me. Let me give my spiel, and then we'll go straight into the scenes. Um, the, I think the only good things about the, these movies, the only thing I liked about the movies was the costume in the second one. Mm-hmm. Love it. And the only other good thing about uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man is that he's going to be in the next movie coming up. Um, Did you like Gwen Stacy's death? That was brutal. I thought that, I thought that was really that was brutal. Uh, that got me. That's why I give it like a seven out of ten because that, that scene. I didn't expect her part. to be dead. I was like, yeah. wait, is she oh, alive? <laughs> one no, more thing. Like, no way. One more thing. This we talk like we okay. So Spider-Man, the uh, Tobey Maguire revolutionized superhero movies. Uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man revolutionized web swinging in Spider-Man movies. Like it changed what web, like most of the mm. video games use web swinging techniques from the movie because they completely they had a different I guess CGI choreographer. They compl- they uh, when he swings in the building and he pulls and he I can't explain the way you swing. I don't you don't fucking swing like Spider-Man, but the swinging in the movie I think was better than in all the other movies in my opinion. Mm. I wouldn't my say, opinion. I would argue that in, in the, the action in these movies are a step down from the original Not the Raimi. Action. You know no, I'm saying the action which includes the swinging is a step down because they over rely on CGI and they don't use practical effects that much. Like there's there's a weightlessness to the action in this where if you film it practical, you have to shoot it from different angles and the way you edit it and shoot it yeah. emphasizes the like every hit and every like the impact of everything. But in this one if you could just Let's just get a CGI in one shot, and like Blizzard punches Spider Man. It just feels like these two weightless characters, I and I don't. I think we lose that, and we sort of get it a little bit, and we get it back in Homecoming a little bit, but not really. I think it's the action is best in the original trilogy. I think this was a step down in terms of action, um, but I do like the opening scene, the opening action scene yeah. in uh, Amazing Spider Man Two when you first see Spider Man. Troy says one more thing, and then we'll go to the scenes. I was just gonna say that it's like um, I agree that the best looking costume is uh, the second movie in this series. That's the, the one worst. he's gonna wear in No Way Home. I hope so, because I, because I, I was gonna say the the ugliest Spider Man costume I've ever seen <laughs> is Amazing Spider Man One. I think <laughs> it's hideous. 
It has yellow eyes and they're squint. It's like, what? What are you doing? From the sunglasses. Yeah, Hideous. I like that it's from the sunglasses, but I'm not, I don't like that oh. suit that much. And I got to say, I was pissed when I saw this movie because I remember the first Which trailer. Uh, the first Amazing okay. Spider-Man film, actually. Yeah. Um, The trailer for that. I don't know if it was the... I think it was the first trailer that came out was this long first-person sequence of, of Peter Parker running and he's doing all his parkour and he lands on the building and like you could see his reflection. And then in the actual movie, they use like... Third, not, not, like ten seconds from that of, of that awesome prolonged scene that pissed me off. I remember being very. Mm-hmm. All right, let's uh, let's go to the scenes. Who's got the lowest score from last round? Still me, but I don't even I don't even remember who's like, got the second lowest score. Any good scenes from this movie? <laughs> Troy or Cade or I, I had a nine. Oh, you had a nine. So I had a, wait, what did I have? I had a nine. You too, had a right? nine as well. I had an eight and a half. What did I have? Nine, I think. Cade, you want to go? I can, but like I don't remember the scene. I just literally watched it off a YouTube video. <laughs> you, so you don't have to. You can pass it on, and then you, whoever doesn't go just takes five sips of beer. That's because I do have I that, do have one I scene. Yeah, I have um, a great scene. I don't want to call this a great scene, but I really liked it. Mine's not great either. It's just okay. Great. Well, I can explain it well. Like I can, I, I know what the scene is after watching it. If you so. want to explain, okay. It. So Gwen's dad, who's Spider Man's like girlfriend, mm-hmm. is the head of police, who's like after Spider Man, right? I think he's after. Yeah, yeah. So after Spider Man. And basically, they're chasing him, and they catch Spider-Man in some predicament where he's been fighting, and basically, they're all fighting, they're all fighting, and then somehow, his mask gets thrown off, and so he's sitting there, and he's like, fuck, my girlfriend's dad is the head of police, and he's about to find out who I am. And so he fucking stands up, and he beats the shit out of every single person in the vicinity with his head straight down, head straight down so nobody can see his face, beats everybody up, and at the end... I'm pretty sure he, he actually, like, his face was shown to him. Yeah, he finds out. And then he out. just dipped, and he's, like, left or something. He goes, let me go, and he's like, fine. Yeah. He's like, don't shoot, and then they shoot him in the leg. Yeah, but dude, injured. the scene where he literally, he realized, fuck my, I'm, like, blown, he literally just put his head straight down, and he just fought like this. Three, and it, yeah. was the, it was a really cool fight Two, scene. I do remember that. One um, so time. Yeah. Um, okay, give him a rating. Um, I'm going to say, so you're basically saying, like, he was fighting blind. Pretty, he was basically yeah. He yeah. looked straight down. And he just I don't know how he did it. I guess Spider Sense. Spider like Sense. A, a yeah. John Spider Wick. Yeah. It was a, it was a sick scene. It was. I, I get to remember that. I forgot yeah. about that scene actually. Um, I'm pitching. Wait, oh, wait. What? you got to give a score. Oh, I'm sorry. And then <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> uh, eight and a half. That was pretty good. Um, mine's nothing spectacular. It's not explosive. It's not action. It's just uh, Spider Man was in a sewer and he literally makes a spider web, mm. and because he's looking for the lizard in the sewer. And he lays on the spider web, and he's just playing on his phone. And then he starts feeling vibrations on the spider web, like a real spider. And he's like, oh, something's happening. And he gets into, like, a spider position and looks around and feels the vib- where the vibrations are coming from. We've never seen that from a Spider-Man movie. Um, and I thought that was really cool that he actually used a real spider technique in a literal spider sense mm. to find where shit's coming from and where shit's yeah, going. Yeah, that was a cool scene. I thought that was so creative. I thought that was so cool, and I'm very happy they did that. So we used a real spider web in a sewer to find out what section of the sewer the lizard was at. True. Um, I don't know how you would rate that, but it was cool. Mm. I'm like, you can give it a low score. I just think it's really I cool. I don't know either, like, because it is cool, because, like, you just said, like, that they've never done that before, but I don't think, for me, I would have been like, oh, this is amazing, you know? Like, yeah. I'd be like, oh, right. that's cool. Um, I'll give it a six and a half. Okay. Um, mine I'm pitching because it's bad. It's a bad scene, but it's so great to watch. So Spider Man is they set this up. They set him up to be like the super genius kid who like cracks the code on like cross species genetics, and he goes to Doctor Kirk Connors after fighting the oh, giant yeah. lizard. And Doctor Kirk Connors, he knows, has been working with cross species genetics, and he goes to Kirk Connors, who is the lizard. He turns into the lizard and terrorizes this bridge. And he goes to Doctor Kirk Connors. He's like, Hey, can, how do I kill a big lizard or something? Like, how do I know about this? And Kirk Connors, like his hair is like all weird and he has like scales on his neck and stuff and he's like why would you want to kill a lizard there's no predators for lizards they're the apex predator he's like lizards are the greatest they're the next step in our evolution <laughs> and then peter's like okay cool thanks and then he goes now get out of my office and then dr kind of leaves and just leaves spider-man in there and then spider-man like if, if he didn't get enough hints that he was obviously the lizard uh he sees like a rat that was like turned into a lizard like eating another rat and he goes Oh, Dr. Kirk Connors is the litter. Like, how did you not know that already? <laughs> like, obviously, that was Dr. Kirk. That was the most conspicuous man of all time. Because he, he's... <laughs> the guy's just like, everybody he, wants to be a lizard. He's like, a lizard. <laughs> I wish I was a lizard. <laughs> Make me a lizard. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> and he's like, he, he has scales on his neck. <laughs> all right. Why wouldn't anyway, you want to be a lizard? 
<laughs> give that a rating, then we'll move on. I don't know. Wait, how do you that. Mind? Oh, you want to do one? Yeah, I want to do right, well, one. give it a rating, then listen to Troy. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know, because like you said, it was bad, but it's funny, so I'll give it a seven. All right, Troy, go ahead. We got to be quick. Yeah, quick. So uh, the lizard goes to Spider-Man's high school, and it's fighting Spider-Man in the high school, you know, and he's tearing through lockers and all that, and it's cool because the lizard... Uh, he's a scientist, the actual guy. So he's taking like chemicals and mixing stuff from the science lab and throwing it and it's exploding. But then the best scene of that is when they bust into the library and we're looking at Stan Lee facing the camera wearing headphones like us and he's dancing to some like classical music. And that's all we hear while in the background, <laughs> the lizard and Spider-Man are beating the piss out of each other. Lizard throws a table and it like almost hits Stan Lee in the back of the head, but Spider Man webs it and pulls it away to save Stan Lee. And Stan Lee's like unaware the whole time. He's just oh, dancing, yeah, having a that. great yeah. time. And it's just awesome. It's like a 15 second scene. They're just beating the hell out of each other. You know, they're almost hitting him. And it's hilarious. And it was the one scene I could remember from that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Amanda, give that a rating. And then we're going to move on to the final, uh, not trilogy, but the final two movies. We're going to do those in two, two? Uh, I, th- I think we should do it in one. Oh yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't really care how long it took, but if you go, if you want to do that, yeah. Um, okay. I'm gonna say <laughs> what? Um, I'll say seven point five for that 7. one. Seven point five. I'll take it. Seven point five. Right, now, they uh, like like Spider Man four. They were gonna do Amazing Spider Man three, and the story for that is that Peter was gonna figure out how to clone people and bring dead people back to life. What? And he was gonna there. He was gonna bring Gwen Stacy's dad back, and he's gonna dad back, and he was gonna b- bring Gwen back and stuff. Seemed like a terrible story. Yeah, they were going to introduce if any uh, Eddie Brock and stuff like that. It oh. seemed like it would have been uh, even more of what a total a mess. nightmare. So they, and they were going to launch this giant Spider Verse universe to compete with Marvel, and then they, they canceled the Spider Man thing. So they were then they started Venom, and they were going to make a Venom Verse. They're going to make a Spider Verse without Spider Man. And then now they're just merging it all together and Bro, stuff. Who is coming up with these? Uh, who are these people? It's mostly like Amy this? Pascal and Avi Arad, who the like people hate. God. Yeah. But um, That's but awful. that but before they fired Andrew Garfield, and that leads us into our next two movies: the Tom Holland Spider Man's. Uh, In three, yeah, two, one. Oh my god! Spider Man Homecoming and Spider Man Far From Home, uh, both around the same uh, uh, uh same length: two hours and nine minutes, two hours and, and thirteen minutes. Uh, both directed by John Watts. I like that they stick with the directors for multiple movies and never, you know, go. Uh, box office for Homecoming was 117 million opening weekend, 334 domestic haul, um, uh, 100 million, uh, and uh, 880 worldwide. So it didn't even make as much as Spider Man 3. Um, and then Spider Man Far From Home was right off the back of Avengers Endgame. That, that same with uh, Spider Man uh, 2. It had an opening uh, on Wednesday. So the opening weekend is 92 million. But we don't know how much that was in comparison because it had a strange opening weekend uh, slot. But that made three forty domestically and one point one million worldwide. So it was the first one to break a billion. Um, the budgets for those were around it was seven hundred seventy five million dollars, hundred sixty million for Far From Home. And I think I don't think they're great. I think they're both like solid, solidly good. Uh, I like that the first. I like. I think I like the first one a little bit more, and I like how. Um, uh, how it's just a very sm- a smaller scale, as small scale as you can get with Spider Man of just Peter, uh, in high school, like trying to just like you know make a name for himself in New York and stuff like that. Um, and I think it's a st- I think the bo- action is just kind of boring sometimes because it's missing that kind of practical thing that we're talking about with the Sam Raimi movies. Um, but I do like Vulture. I think Vulture is a really really good villain, and I like how he's just this big massive jaggedy metal and stuff like yeah. that. And I think that's a really good. Uh, I think it's a really good, a solid start for Peter for Tom Holland Spider Man. All what right, are your guys' thoughts on it? Yeah, I like them. They're fine movies, but my uh, one thing that bothers me, and it bothered me about the Amazing Spider Man one, uh, one and two, is that like they they don't do certain things because the Raimi trilogy did them as well. Like they don't say great power for, uh, comes with great responsibility. They don't say. Um, well, they don't even mention Uncle Ben. Yeah, they the, skipped over all yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, like they don't even say his name. Like, I get it that we've seen this origin a million times, but like, like and, and we don't need to see it. Just say it. Like, I, like I want to, I want yeah, Peter to so have that. Me. Like, that, I, that's his backbone. That's who he is. And in, in this trilogy, he doesn't have any of that. Yeah. Like, it's like it's loosely referenced. Yeah, like and it Iron Man the hell is his dad. Me. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, Tony Stark Jr. over here, which I don't mind because you got to change it up a little bit. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. 
Um, cause we've seen Spider-Man three times now, three different versions. Yeah. Okay. We got to change it a little bit, but, um, yeah. it does get on my nerves. I like how these movies kind of like usher him, like Tom Holland, Spider-Man into the role of being Tony Stark. Kind of, you know how like mm. Iron Man the is leader, like right? the leader. Yeah, a role of By the end of yeah. Homecoming, he like he f- like feels as though he's like from where he began, where he's like super immature, mm. and he actually seems like a kid. You know, yep, like yep. in the original trilogy, like everybody looks like they're thirty. I get it. <laughs> yeah. But like this movie, they're actually yeah, kids. Actually, it's and the he, casting go- he goes from like a <laughs> immature kid. What? I thought I put cast. Oh. He goes from, like, an amateur kid to, like, by the end of Homecoming, he seems like he knows what he's doing, and yeah. he's very sure of himself. What do you think about the costume? I loved it. I, lo- I like the... Uh, I like the CGI. Like, the yeah. death mode version sure. of it. Insta-kill? <laughs> yeah. Insta-kill. That's, kill. The, one, that's <laughs> the biggest weakest, the weakness of these. I think... Well, not the biggest, but, like, one of the things I don't like is how his, su- his suit doesn't feel like a tactile thing. It just feels like this weird fuzzy... Yeah. You know, a computer generated thing, and I don't like that at yeah, all. Yeah, do I? Um, yeah, too Kate much didn't CGI hear, sucks. Kate didn't. You said, sh- oh, she, can I get you? No. no. Fuck. Uh, he didn't say anything yet. Yeah, Have no. you seen these? Oh, no, I, s- I saw them, yeah. No, I was just going to say I liked them, but I'd never. I don't know. I still stick with the original trilogy. I think the yeah. trilogy's by yeah. far the best, but. I mean, I like Tom Holland. I think he's cool. I think he does a good job being Peter Parker. He's got yeah. some potential, funny. I guess. Yeah, he's fine. I just think the the f- the original trilogy and the la- and the home the Tom Holland one are so astronomically different in every way, basically that I'm just like, I end up I can't help but not compare. Yeah. I gotta yeah. always compare the two, and I'm like I'm just gonna always side with Tom- Tobey Maguire, so it sucks. But I like I like him. I think I I try and separate them, and I try and think of Spider Man as a- as like an Avenger, and I think of him as like a separate character than the Tobey Maguire one. Mm. So that's the only way I can get yeah. through that. But I really like. I mean, Mysterio's that was a good movie, and then. I can't remember Homecoming. I can't remember what happened in that Vulture. one. Vulture. Vulture. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, yeah, it was good. I just yeah. think it's, for me, I, I think of Avengers when I think of Spider-Man now. I don't think of him as his mm-hmm. own character. I think himself. thematically the Sam Raimi trilogy was like, had the most punch mm-hmm. in terms of like, you know, like uh, like Peter's character and his character arcs and stuff. I think I think that that felt the most like existential. And then these are kind of just, especially the, the new Spider-Man, they don't feel, his changes don't feel that important. They're very yeah. small. But um, well, but that's also wait. That goes along with I can't remember if I said it on the podcast with you or what. I just I was just talking about this with this actually relates to like NFTs, but just in general with with TV shows, movies, NFTs. People aren't pro- the teams and people focusing on making these projects work aren't focusing on like the long term uh, scope and like scale of what the show or movie could be. And so like TV shows aren't focusing on giving characters full episodes because they're like we don't care. Outer Banks. We just need 14 episodes so people will watch all of it in one week and then we can just, like, make our money back. And, like, in in six weeks, no one gives a shit about Outer Banks. Same with, like, I mean, okay, that's a little bit different with, like, Avengers because Tom Holland's, like, cemented in the space. But I feel like sometimes I feel like, I don't know, I feel like... There are, like, bridges like, to get to another I don't, I don't know. Place. I just, I don't care as much about him I, as yeah, I, I do as, like, the you. action scenes. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it's all about the action scenes, the cool CGI. Spectacle. Yeah, the, yeah, all that stuff. And I don't really care about Peter as a person nearly as much, but... Maybe it's because I'm older now, but I, I can't really relate to Spider-Man. No, actually, that's not true, because w- w- there's one scene in particular that I, I want to mention in my scenes that, like, my dad really liked, and he's in his 50s, so I'm like, he related to a lot of things. He's like, fuck, this is cool. My dad loved the movie, loved the first movie. Um, I don't know what his opinion is on the second one, but he's you know, generations away from us, and he loved mm. it. Hold on, and so I, though, wasn't a fan of these movies. I, I didn't like the costume. I thought I, th- I thought Tom Holland did, is great is a great Spider-Man. I thought they're doing a fantastic job. I I can't really say these are my exact flaws, um, but as a whole, I I wasn't I didn't have that much fun. I didn't have that much fun. You I think d- they did a fantastic job? No, I think they like did, the I think they did a fantastic job for the overall. Like how many uh, sp- uh, Marvel movies are there? Like twenty, 20 something. something. I think it p- fits perfectly in this universe. Yeah, I it think fits perfectly for Marvel. They did exactly yeah. what they set out to do. I think that's they did a fantastic job doing exactly what they wanted to yeah. do. I don't like it though. I don't right. like the Spider Man. Um, I don't like. Um, I like it did you, did you, in the f- second one, the Far From Home. I liked his stealth, that stealth suit, the black one, because that was, that was, cool. act- that was an actual know. real suit. Yeah, that yeah. No, that, I think that's the only thing that was cool about it. But I, I didn't like the suit. I don't like some of the. Ah, you said suit, you motherfucker. We've, been sa- we've all been saying it. Yeah, the but I podcast. I've been forgetting <laughs> to <laughs> say <laughs> moron. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Take a drink. Yes, I will. Um, I I didn't like the suit. I I didn't like um. 
some of the dialogue. I I don't know, man. It's just I don't like how he's so open with his identity. I don't like how little we get to see him. Like I know he's still a child and he's not in the city yet, but we don't really see him do much city stuff. Um, I know we will well, see that. In the first one, we see a lot of that. In the first one? Yeah, he's just going around Queens, like, helping people. And no, stuff, I, meant like, I meant, like, I meant, like, uh... Hey, Spider-Man, Man, do a flip! I mean, like, Manhattan stuff and <laughs> shit. Like, I know he, like, we'll probably see that in the next, like, trilogy with him, but there's just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I can't even say it's because I'm nostalgic for the last movies. I just, I guess I was expecting more, but that might be because I've already had so much Spider-Man that I'm getting, like, a little tired of it, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um... But it wasn't it wasn't my favorite, so I, I w- didn't really like it. But I still enjoy myself when I see them, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I I do think this next one coming up, I don't think there's a chance I'm not gonna like it. I think this is gonna be my favorite Spider-Man movie by far, and I think Toby. Ever? If they show yes. up, if, if they show if up, they're gonna show have up. to show up. This is gonna there's be no my way. this is gonna be my favorite Spider-Man movie. I'd hate to um, be the directors and they know that they're not gonna show. Yeah, up. Yeah, like, oh, everybody's shit. like, I can't <laughs> wait for Call the other Spider-Man yeah. to show the up. Problem is, the problem is, if it's just a cameo, I don't know if that would even be. I feel like that would almost be worse. No, if there's they just they a cameo. Well, apparently they're in it. The him and Andrew are both in it for like thirty minutes. Okay, so that's like each, not like together. So let's let's do our scenes and then we can wrap up with whatever else we want to say. Um, I just say the original trilogy, for, uh, Spider-Man one, fantastic. Spider-Man two, fantastic. Three, good. Amazing Spider-Man one, bad. Uh, <laughs> this Amazing Spider-Man two, I have a saw. I kind of like it, even though I don't know. I think it's a good movie. I enjoy it. Uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming and Far From Home, they're both good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, who wants to do the scenes first? I lost track of who was first. I go. First. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Go first. All right, my scene has to do with um, it's basically the final scene of Far From Home. Where he, um, so the the pro- the antagonist in this is uh, Mysterio, and basically what he does is he's like a super billionaire guy who uses these robots that fly around and create images in the air that make it seem like there's like these villains, like it projects these mm-hmm. like big monster things, and right. it projects also like a suit onto him and makes him seem like he's a good guy. Which also, wait, I don't want to like go too far, but I thought that was a good reveal. You think he's like a good guy? He's helping out Peter the whole time. But wait, he wait, wait, wait. Are you so? Are you what scene are you doing though? Because if you're doing two scenes, one of that that might interrupt my scene. You can only do one scene. I it was just to gonna explain. Uh, don't uh, explain uh, anything. Just okay. Like, uh, all right, I'll just yeah. do. It. So basically, he's like surrounded by all these like basically projections of things, and he's just like, I don't. It's Spider-Man, like, in a tunnel, and he has to get to um, Mysterio, but he's getting, like, um, tricked by all the, like, mirages. Of, it's mis- mirages of Mysterio, right? Right. It's like Projections. he's using he's using, yeah. he's using CG, like, 3D CGI to mm-hmm. manipulate the environment mm-hmm. so Peter doesn't know what's real and what's and, not and real. And I thought this was so that cool. Was because so fucking cool. Yeah, he's using, he uses, like, his spider senses to, like, see through the mirage and find the robots. Okay. And he's just, like... It's just like a whole thing of him going down the hallway using his spider senses, just taking out all of them one by one, and it's like it's just so cool. And then he gets to the he gets to the actual uh, thing, and he just like I guess he just punches him right or like yeah. Well, he he gets to Mysterio. Mysterio right, time. Can I just explain the rest? Yeah, of this yeah, story? yeah. I was talking. He gets to Mysterio. Mysterio is like, you know what, Peter, you're a good kid. Here's the Tony Stark's glasses, which are a big like I- like item in the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he goes to take it, and all of a sudden, Spider Man goes. Whoop! Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. and he re- and then the the illusion fades away. And Mysterio is actually behind him, with the, about to shoot him with a gun. He mm. uses like another projection. Yeah, thing, he, but. yeah. He catches the thing and he just clicks it and t- throws the gun away. And he puts the glasses on, and that in that moment, it's like he's turning into Tony Stark. It's super right. cool. Yeah, it's just crazy. So uh, it's a it's a really good scene. Well, this isn't the exact scene, but this is like the first time you get to see it, and this is really fantastic. Yeah. But um, uh, Every so person, yeah. <laughs> who's next? I got a seven. Oh, she didn't rate it. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I'll, I'm gonna give that a nine. Uh, who's the cool. the next lowest? I got I got a seven. For what'd you get? Seven point five. I think I, I think got five. a six and a you half. Got a six and a half. Yeah. All right, so I, I'll go. Um, again, nothing too like award winning or spectacular or like crazy action shit. But um, it's the one my dad really liked. Um, from Spider Man uh, Homecoming, the first one in this soon to be trilogy. Where Spider Man has doesn't have his high tech suit, doesn't have anything. Is, he has no plan. He doesn't, or he has his own plan, but no one's telling him what to do. It's him alone with no one but himself, 
and he's never done this before, fighting a big supervillain, and he's losing. And he gets an entire building collapsed on top of him, and the vulture flies away. And Spider-Man, or Peter Parker, is crying, and he's angry, and he's underneath this, uh, what looks like a, a heater cooler kind of thing. It's just really heavy roof It's stuff. like a steel beam, There's I think. Something. And he's sitting there, feels like a failure, and he's like, help, help. And he's like, no, I've got this. He's like, come on, Spider-Man. He's calling, he's calling himself Spider-Man. He believes himself. Come on, Spider-Man. Come on, Spider-Man. He's, and he lifts up, I'll say the steel beam, steel beam, uh, and he get, uh, gets free. And that was like the first, al- although he went there to go fight this big battle alone, this right here was a true test of his strength and his discipline. And um, it meant a lot to the audience. It meant a lot to people like my father who grew up with Spider-Man as a child. Like, holy shit. Uh, come on, Spider-Man, come on, Spider-Man. And it, it was a big scene, very heartwarming, and um, sensitive enough, if you're sensitive enough, it's just like something you would cry with. But uh, that's it. Time. <laughs> I was one minute, point twenty-two. Oh. Nice. Um, I'm going to say that was a seven. Or, uh, who's next? Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so my scene, Mysterio, in the movie... He's set up as, like, an ally to Peter Parker. He's from another di- uh, uh, dimension where Earth was destroyed. Now he's trying to help Peter Parker and Nick Fury and uh, Maria Hill try to fight these monsters on our Earth. And after they fight the monsters, like, we did it. He goes, hey, let's go get a drink, Peter. And he's, like, this very stern, serious guy, Mysterio. And Peter has these glasses from Tony Stark who gave them to him when he died uh, that, like, control, like, all these drone strikes or whatever. It's, like, a very powerful thing to have these glasses. And... um and uh, he goes to, to get a drink with Mysterio. And Mysterio kind of, like, is talking to him about it. And Peter makes a realization that, like, oh, Mysterio deserves to have these glasses. Like, I'm just a kid. Like, I can't do this. So he, so, and Mysterio's like, no, don't give me the glasses. Like, no, it's fine. And then he gives him the glass and he leaves. He goes, all right, see ya. See ya, Peter. He's like, thanks, Mysterio. And then he walks out. And as Peter walks out, you see, like, the room. All of a sudden, people start disappearing, like, CGI like holograms, they start disappearing and then some people stay there and all the people start that are like the remain, they're looking at Mysterio, like creeping up to him, like, like this, like I asked him to talk and you go to Mysterio with, uh, with the glasses in his hands, he goes, and he's like a very stern, serious guy. All of a sudden he changes and goes, did I say it would be that hard? And like, they're all like, yeah, like that. And he goes, and they're, they're this like shitty bar. He goes, now get this stupid costume off me. <laughs> and, and it's like, oh, it's so good. It's so silly. He turns it off and he basically explains that they were just do, using all the CGI stuff with the monsters and stuff in order to yeah. get the Tony Stark glasses so he can become the world's greatest villain and fill the void that that was left by Tony Stark after he died. <laughs> it's so, and he goes on this huge exposition thing about like, this is how we did it. Maria, you did this, which allowed us to do this. Good job. They're like, yeah. It's, oh, it's so good. <laughs> All right. Get the stupid costume off! <laughs> that that is a good scene. Such a great stupid. That's um, like the best reveal of oh, a it's so villain. good. The <laughs> way he says yeah. it, yeah. stupid costume. Uh, one thing I want to say about that is like because that people were walking out of that theater saying, "God, I thought Jake Dylan was a good actor," and that's because he was acting as a bad actor. To be mysterious, right. it was so confusing. And I love how he was. He was like a like a like a like a childish director. He was like, they will see what I want them to see. Like he was like doing that like, weird, like wacky screaming the whole time. Yeah. It was so good. Um, <laughs> whose turn is it? Wait, she didn't give us rating. I'll give it oh, an eight point five. Eight point five. Nice. Uh, is it tr- your turn, Troy? I, th- I got a seven point <laughs> five. I think I got seven point five. I think. Oh, whatever. So, you did you did the illusion scene with like the dead. Iron Man and all that, right? No, that no, no. That he, no, no, that's no, the one he I did played. the one at the end. That was the one Mark played, so you're good. Okay, yeah. okay, cool. That's why. Okay. <laughs> so, Mysterio, you know, the, he's the illusion guy. Whatever happens, he rigs up this area that when Peter Parker steps into it, it's just a giant friggin' like illusion room. Peter doesn't know it um, at first, but then like stuff starts happening. Like Mysterio gets big and like claps, you know, and Peter's right here. Oh, he claps him. He's doing all this like trippy stuff. Like he. It's it's like a psychedelic scene, mm-hmm. it's like in a Spider Man movie, and all this crazy stuff, stuff inside of things and space, and um, uh, mm-hmm. this is after Endgame, so Tony Stark is dead, and he does something where um, Peter falls and lands in front of Tony Stark's grave, and like a zombie Iron Man crawls out of the grave and starts coming towards Peter, and Peter's freaking out because oh that's like God. that's like his like father in this universe, I guess, like his pseudo father, and um, I think it's one of the most visually interesting scenes, probably. In, in the Spider-Man series, maybe even in the MCU, but it's just really crazy and how trippy it is and stuff's just falling and twisting yeah. and colors and like it's, Five it's, seconds. Just, it's a psychedelic scene. I, I really liked it. Mm. All right. Also, at the end of that scene, he gets uh, smacked by a train. Yeah. Does he? I don't even remember that. Yeah. Oh, oh, destroyed. 
Oh yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with an eight. Cool. Nice. All right, Cade. Finish right. us up. So, setting the scene, Peter Parker just asked this, his crush to the homecoming dance thing. So his, uh, her dad okay. is driving them in the car, and it's those two in the back, and the guy who's driving the dad is basically Hawk or the Vulture dude. He's like the evil guy, and Peter Parker's like, "Holy fuck, my the guy I'm fighting, I'm trying to kill, is literally her dad." And so he's in there. He's hella awkward because he's like, "Yo, he fucking knows who I am. He knows who I am." So he's sitting there, super awkward, super awkward. How long? We're not at all. Yeah, tw- Thirty seconds. Okay. And so he's sitting there, super awkward, super awkward. He's not really saying anything. They pull up. She goes, all right, we're going to go. And he's like, okay, have fun. And he goes, all right. So they both start to go out. And he goes, why don't you hold back, Peter? And he's like, oh, fuck. And she goes, no, don't worry. Go inside, honey. She leaves. He goes, all right. And he basically is just like, stay out of my fucking business and don't ever like say anything. And I won't kill everybody in your whole family and blah, blah, blah. And he's show, just like. Go show my daughter a good time. Yeah, and then he's <laughs> like, all right, now go in there and have a good time. But And then he says something <laughs> stupid. But dude, that shit was super fucking like uncomfortable. That I was sitting there and I was, getting, I was getting squeamish. I was like, yo. Five fuck. seconds. <laughs> That's pretty much it though. Okay. <laughs> you see the gears turning as like they yeah, figure dude. it out. Like, I know who you are. Yeah, it's like, great. Fuck. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go with an eight on that one as well. Cool. Your time. Guys. This is almost the end. We've got a word reveal and a movie uh, recommendation to do. But what a fantastic childhood we've had to have all these movies, huh? True. Oh, my gosh. Uh, was it five movies? And now we are adults who are able to at any time see this movie eight times in one day if we wanted to. <laughs> That's coming out. Okay, this is Road to Spider-Man. There's so much history. Road in to the, Spider-Man, No Way Home. In, in the fact... Would you got a question? Yeah. Uh, uh, we so we have we're seeing No Way Home in IMAX, right? Yeah. And the only way we can see it in IMAX is if we went to this one theater that's fifty minutes away. So when we go see Spider Man at home, we will be seeing Spider Man far from home. Yeah. Good one. All right. When, that, when does it come out again? The seventeenth or sixteenth. Nice. Um. So. <laughs> I think what a win it is that we don't have to anymore feel like we missed out on the Toby or the Andrew Garfield, like what would happen after, because mm-hmm. now we are getting some closure. I'm I'm so excited for it. But, guys, this was Road to Spider-Man. Thank you so much for being on. Let's do the movie recommendation, word reveal afterwards. Johnny, what do you got for us? All right, my movie recommendation is a Tobey Maguire movie from uh, 19, I think, 1998. Yes, 1998, and it's... Pleasantville, and it's it stars uh, Tobey Maguire and who's the other bitch in it? I forget who. I forget, <laughs> <laughs> I forget who plays his sit here. I forget who plays his sister. Oh, Reese Witherspoon, and it's uh, two 1990s teenage siblings find themselves in a 1950s sitcom where their influence begin to family uh, begins to profoundly change uh, that complacent world. And it's basically like it's kind of like Jumanji in the sense they go to this other thing. They go into this world in black and white in the TV show. And I remember just watching it when I was a kid. And there's not a lot of movies when you're a kid that are just like straight up dramas where like there's no action scenes. You just can sit there and watch it. But I used to watch it all the time with me and my family when I was really young. Uh, so I would def- def- definitely recommend that all movie. Right. Directed and written by Gary Ross, who did Sea Biscuit Good. and Ocean's Eight that came out a few Ocean's years ago. Ocean's Eight. Yeah. <laughs> right. It sounds good. I'm happy you picked a Toby movie. Um, Guys, let's do a word reveal and then wrap up. I'll go first. My words were best fight, train, dance, and costume. Cade? I had girlfriend, swing, ass, tricks, and drone. Okay, Troy? I had I had glider, goblin, sun, reptile, and cops. Nice. Well, yeah. goblin wouldn't have worked because that's the name of the game. Yeah, that wouldn't have worked. Green goblin <laughs> is the name. Uh, yeah, it's well, a stretch. I it's a stretch, know. Danny. I had swing. Webs, senses, AI, and cool. Can we give a round of applause for Danny yeah, for getting dude, all of his words, words on I'm this proud. episode? I'm very proud. Good I'm going to keep this. Way to go. Way to go. <laughs> we got to frame it. Uh, yeah, Johnny? Uh, and can we give a round of applause for me for taking all of the drinks? <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Um, I did web, ding, think, CGI, and suit. CGI and suit. Guys, thank you so much for being on. This was a fantastic time. Guys, stay tuned for uh, the next Spider-Man coming out. Uh, no Way Home, right? Uh, it's going to be awesome coming out on the 16th, 17th. We'll probably post an episode on we're the gonna, 18th or 19th. Yeah. Um, well, we can do it on the 17th because we're seeing it at 12 on this Friday. I don't know if I could edit an entire podcast. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, I see. What you yeah, mean. so we'll post the episode on the 18th and 19th. Yeah. But uh, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Peace. Bye. Bye. Subscribe Bye. and like. Adios. Smash that like button. <laughs>
Alles gut zum Fachen.